in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Self before we start hallelujah your life will never be the same your life will never be the same your life will never be it's a prophecy Say my life will never be Lord, my life Sing my life Hallelujah. I know that for sure. The Lord told me he will do mighty things in this place tonight. Hallelujah. And when God speaks, it's up to you to believe it. If you don't believe, he will just jump you. He doesn't have time to waste. There is always a receiver. It may not be you, but it may be somebody close to you. But there is always a receiver. Hallelujah. Wherever there is a receiver, there is a God to give abundantly. I live to praise your name. Oh, yes. And I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. I live to praise your name. And I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Come on, shake away your fears with this song. I live to praise your name. And I have no fear of what tomorrow I live and I have no fear of what tomorrow This is the part I want you to sing. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Sing it again until fear leaves you. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings doesn't matter what you saw on the board doesn't matter what the medical report tells you doesn't matter that you are advancing in age two more times for the last time now Lord, we have no fear. We are absolutely certain. Absolutely. Based on the truth of your word. Lord, we thank you. Because you are faithful. Bless us tonight. In the name of Jesus. Let the name of the Lord be honored. Hallelujah. How many of you know this song? I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised? I will call upon. The Lord, who is worthy to be praised? So shall I be saved. 
Come on, sing the Lord reigneth. The Lord reigneth. Blessed be the Lord. The Lord reign at one more time with faith in your heart. The Lord Blessed be the rock. Be the rock. Let, the rock Let the rock of my salvation, of my salvation be exalted. The Lord Blessed be the rock. Let the rock. Sing it one more time with faith in your heart. You're not just singing a chorus. Blessed be the rock. Let the rock of my salvation be exalted in my life. salvation the Bible says call unto me Jeremiah 33 verse 3 said and I will answer I will show you great and mighty things that you know not and so Lord we thank you honestly we thank you and tonight you will exalt yourself in the lives of many people in this place you will be exalted you will be exalted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes it's good to visit these very deep, powerful hymns. They were not written by hungry people. They were not producing albums. Hallelujah. Some of these hymns were written by people who were very, very powerful people they knew god personally they were not just trying to do the kind of jamboree that we do in church today hallelujah and it was from the depth of their experiences that they wrote certain songs be exalted in the name of jesus hallelujah can we sing one more song be lifted high. can you lift your hands as you sing the song Lord, we exalt you. We're singing songs that lift him high. Listen to what you are singing. You're righteous. There is no deceit in you. Now sing it with faith in your heart. Believe that I. Oh Lord, oh Lord, be lifted high for you are holy. Righteous and worthy. Oh Lord, be lifted Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Of ten people, tell them you're welcome. It's good to see you. And be gloriously seated in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It's good to see everyone. We have a lot to do tonight. Hallelujah. A lot to do tonight. God is desperate to make sure somebody has a testimony in this place. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're rounding up our family life series today. It's going to be powerful. 
Psalms 128. Tonight, we're going to cause the yoke of delay in marriage once and for all. I'm serious. Don't think we're playing. We don't just talk stories in this place. We're going to confront, we're confronting the gates of hell in a way that will shock you tonight. This is pre-miracle service. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're going to destroy a lot of things that have tied people's marital destinies. Let me tell you something. If you came here just drowsy and sleepy, wake up. Today's service is not the type you sleep in. Because whatever has refused to respond to your life and to your marital destiny will change tonight. Some of you will be standing for your loved ones. Could this be the answer to your prayer and fasting? So make sure that you are wide awake. If your neighbor is disturbing him, say, neighbor, we didn't pay money for this place. So behave yourself. Hallelujah. Psalms 128. Psalms 128 verse 1. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Because I fear the Lord. Yes, say one more time. I am blessed, I am blessed. because I fear the Lord. He says that walketh in his ways. Verse 2. For thou shalt eat the labor of thy hands. Who is God speaking to tonight? He said for thou shalt eat the labor of your hands. Happy shall thou be and it shall be well with you. Are you ready now? Verse 3. Brothers, can you say amen? amen. Thy wife. That means you will be married. I curse. Listen, listen. He says thy wife. It didn't say a stranger that is roaming around your house without identity. He said, thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine. Hold on. It didn't say your wife shall be as a vine because Jesus saw a fig tree that didn't bear fruit. He said, thy wife shall be as a fruitful by, by thy side. No divorce. This is not the issue of fighting. He said, by thy side. And the last time I read my Bible, my Bible says Jesus was standing at the right side of the Father. They've not had any issue. There, there has not been need to separate themselves. Hallelujah. Everybody say, thy children. I tell you the truth. The devil that is, a, is, is responsible for the barrenness of people and families. I'm going to be teaching shortly and we'll be praying this night. Light and darkness will clash. One must bow this night. I told you this is, this is pre-miracle service. Hallelujah. It says thy children like olive plants round about your table. Organize, discipline, visionary children. Not touts, not thieves, not troublemakers, not terrorists. It said they'll be round about your table, not in prison cells. They will be round about your table. Verse 4. Behold, that thus shall be blessed. That means this is a portrait. This is how you will know that a man is blessed of the Lord. He said whenever you see a man organized, married, with his wife by his side, well-behaved children, sitting around a table, that means there is prosperity there. He said when you see that, this is a portrait of God's idea of a blessed family. Say amen. Father, we ask you tonight, in the name of Jesus, do something in this place. You told me you will shake, tear down altars. Lord, it's time to let your people go maritally. We are, we are here tonight to confront the gates of hell and release your people. Enough is enough. It's good to have testimonies of cars, healings, miracles, but God wants you to be blessed maritally. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Genesis 1.28 I'll be talking about three things and then we'll pray straight away. Hallelujah. And God blessed them. Say, and God blessed them. And said unto them, number one, 
Number two, be fruitful. Multiply. It says, replenish the earth. Subdue it. Why will he say subdue it? Because there is an adversary roaming around. He says subdue. In other words, exert authority over him. And have dominion over the fish and all of that and all of that. Hallelujah. Now very quickly, how many of you have been blessed by the Family Life series? We started talking about a lot of things. Hallelujah. And by the grace of God, we have been able to cover some grounds. Remember our five love languages, the love and respect principle. For many of you who have not been around, please get it. It's very serious, very comprehensive. Hallelujah. Now, I want to talk briefly. I'll talk on three subtopics. Number one, the reason why people experience late or no marriage. The reason why people experience late or no marriage. Hallelujah. This is not so much of a teaching because I'm, I'm in a hurry to finish. I want to pray. Hallelujah. Honestly, I want to pray. We need to tear down walls because some of you have suffered things that the devil must repay back. A hundredfold, pressed down, shaken together. See, the Bible says if you catch a thief, he won't just say, sorry, I, I won't do it again. No, no. The Bible doesn't deal with thieves like that. It says if you catch a thief, who is a thief? Who is a thief? No, no, no. I didn't say who is the thief. Who is a thief generally? One who lays claim and steals what is not his own. There are many people that would have been enjoying the bliss of joy in their marriage and their family. And the devil has taken a lot of things. Many of you have been helpless. People think you are careless. But tonight, I tell you, we will expose that devil. God showed me this thing. By now, you should know. When you hear me talking like this, I have seen something. Hallelujah. The reason why people experience late or no marriage. Before we talk about Satan, we want to address a few things. The number one reason is unreasonable expectations. Everybody write. Unreasonable, ridiculous expectations. Hallelujah. Please look up. I found out that one of the reasons why a lot of people cannot get married is that their expectations are unrealistic hallelujah especially for ladies when you ask certain ladies ah what kind of guy do you want to marry they say me the way i am like this even if that guy he must be six feet three six feet 2.9 is not for me you should be able to smile and be very nice he should be able to speak queen's english not not lea english that is just basic enough to pass to get um what the, what's that <laughs> school living certificate the guy must be able to have a good sense of color combination he must be able to have this there's, I have no problem against your list. The only question I have is, when will he have these things? Before or during or, if you wish, after the marriage. There's nothing wrong with having these wonderful expectations. My only question is, when? Hallelujah. So, all the brothers that have come, 58 over 60, F9. 59 over 60, F9. 40 over 60, F9. Hallelujah. Unreasonable expectations. There are many people, especially ladies, the, the way, the expectations you have carved out for yourself, the only person that fits that expectation is Jesus Christ. No mortal man can fit that expectation. Today you see somebody that looks nice tomorrow and say, mm -mm, I don't like the way the guy smiles. Why is he too loud? And I want somebody that is... Ah. One man said the best way to predict your future is to create it. So that you don't disturb anybody. Create it by yourself. Hallelujah. Everybody say unreasonable expectation. Me, I've suffered in my life where I must marry a millionaire. 
I must marry a millionaire. There's no, you know when they are taking people for a job, they say you are a driver, you must have five years experience. Some of you, you must have five years experience with prosperity. You must know how to do this and that. He must have his duplex, so I'm not ready to manage inside one room that will be squeezing me. As you're laughing tonight, take it seriously because we have to solve. Some of us are the ones who open doors for delay in marriage. Financial status. Oh, he must be. No, no, no. I'm he's still under unreasonable expectations. Financial status. Brother, where are you working? There's one primary school here. The primary school, me. I, I'm, I, your father has warned you. Your mother has warned you. They say, don't bring any teacher for us here. I was a teacher. Your mother was a teacher. Change. And now you are waiting. You are hoping. Oh, Shell. NMPC. Where again? Say it. Chevron. Uh huh. Sir? Mobile. Look at the lady smiling. CBN. Nigerian Printing and Minting Company. Then go take group. And some of you are happy. Oh, this is the kind. I want somebody that when I stand by him, people will say, Kai, how did God locate you like this? Remember our song? I didn't know you will answer me this way. Listen, while that vision is good, let me tell you what the problem is. The problem is that with this kind of mindset, you will never be able to get married to the right person. You know why? Because oftentimes, God will tell you, go to your farm and harvest your crop. You will get to the farm and see a bag of seeds. Are you listening to me? With hoe on it and grace. These are the three things you will find there. But God told you, go and get a harvest. It is in God's nature to speak and call things as though they have already happened. So God will tell you a millionaire is coming to your life. And you just see a brother come and say, brother, where are you going? He says, shoemaker. He says, ah, God, this does not look like the prophecy. Unreasonable expectation. Physical appearance. I want somebody who is this and that. I want somebody, guys, I want a lady with this and that. I want a lady with dimples. I want a lady with another dimple here. I want a lady with dimple here. I don't want a lady that opens her mouth too wide. What are you looking for? Hallelujah. I want a lady whose hair, you know this Indian film they used to act. I want a lady whose hair is here. Hallelujah. I want a lady who is this. I want a lady who is that. I want a lady who is a top chef who has been validated by everybody to be able to eat. I want a lady who can drive. I want a lady who is this. I want a lady who is that. Unreasonable expectation. Hallelujah. When I was growing up, there was one funny film they used to show. Very nice and pretty. What's the name? Another Life. Man, some of you don't know it. Don't claim you know it. Some of you, where were you then? <laughs> another Life. Hear the name, self. Who use that kind of name now? Media, the Another Life. They're using Second Chance and the rest. And I remember every time I saw some of the people, the, the actors and all of that, I used to look at them and say, ah, especially those who were wicked, they were not very good looking and it used to pain me in the soap opera. And then one poor village pretty lady is the one that will keep telling lies, oppressing and doing all of that. I hated soap operas because I said, ah, why is it that they find very nice ladies and all of that and as small as all, I had a dream and my dream was that one day, one of the person who was acting, that by God's grace if I may, oh... Bible says when I was a child. (laughs) 
Hallelujah. Everybody say unreasonable expectation. My simple message for you tonight is that it does not happen before relationship. You say, ah, but does that... Is what, let me tell you something. Any success you did not invest in it, you are not qualified to partake. That's why there are some men that only married... There are some... Come now, sweetheart, drop your Bible. There are some, there are some men who get married to a lady. They are married though. But this lady is like a stranger. You know why? The guy was already a multi-millionaire. And she's just one of the many things that happened to enter his life. Are you following me now? She has her room. The only thing he does is to sleep with her. That's all. And that's even when he wants. He's like the kings of old. So she's just roaming around like a nanny and a house girl. In her. That's, not, that's not a good home. Are you hearing me? Children say, Mommy, one banana. I say, mm, Go and ask your father. Me, ma, they brought me inside this house. <laughs> me, ma, I'm inside this house. No confidence. You know why? You were looking for something that could not be found. And since you found what looked like it, you have to pay the price there. But a brother that you were there with them, you soaked Gary together. He said, how much do you have now? Don't worry. See, I don't have anything, but I'm speaking God's word. And you can see me. I'm showing you the blueprint of what I'm doing. Now you brought the gari. We drank together. Do you think if we enter the... What car now? <laughs> Say something realistic. Don't tell me limousine. Say something realistic, please. A good car. When we enter a good car, listen. Do you think... Listen. Do you think this lady will be carried away by my prosperity? Because we have been there. Are you listening? You grew into this thing together. Many of you don't want to grow into the blessings of marriage. Some of the wealthy people we know today, ask them. When they got married, the man didn't even have a bicycle. He didn't even have vision for some of them. Just one fellowship, they were strolling one day and God caught him. He got filled with the Holy Ghost. God started walking. But now, the woman is partaking of the blessings. Whether you like the madam or not, she owns the company with her husband. Because they suffered. And she can look at you and tell you, I remember those days. Don't celebrate success that does not have history. It's fake. Any success that does not have history is fake. I assure you, if you are laughing, hold on, stop laughing. Any true success must have history. It is the history that will preserve you in that realm of success. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Very important. Unreasonable expectations. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I set realistic standards. Refer to our message. Um, I think that's um, Family Life 2. We, we stated some very clear and reasonable standards. Bless you, sweetheart. Thank you. Hallelujah. What you want does not exist for many of you. So you must come down and believe. It's still part of this running away from responsibility. Many people don't want to build. Many ladies don't want to build. What if I build this thing and later he says I'm not the one? The Bible didn't say you will reap where you sow. It said you will reap what you sow. Hallelujah. Number two. Now, this is important. Please, everybody listen. Health factors. One of the reasons why people do not get married or they marry late. Of recent, this has become a very, if you are involved in any kind of marriage counseling or maybe in your church and all of that, you know that this is a very big issue. Is that true? Health factors. The issue of genotypes, blood groups. I want you to listen very well. Because for you, what brought you to the sister is beauty. And the vision you saw for your mother or for your father they know the things that they've had to endure or somebody they know are you listening to me so they have parameters that may not appeal to you are you listening to me is someone following genotype what do you do listen what do you do when someone who is of a genotype ss all right now you meet this sister, you love her, two of you are getting together and then you find out that she's also SS. What do you do? And the thing has entered two of you. You have told yourself, do or die. Hallelujah. 
Now you've gone to meet the marriage council on your church and they say, Tom, listen, no. We had the story of so 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 person like this. And they didn't listen to us. They gave birth to five children. The five children all died. Are you ready for all of these things? You know, is someone getting blessed tonight? These are not issues we young people consider. Ah, Ibuku, Jesus Christ, let Ibuku answer me. Oh. Hallelujah. Many of us are too afraid to even consider this thing. Say, look, let's just move. Let's not spoil what God is trying to arrange here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Health factors, blood groups, genotypes. These have become very serious issues in many churches. I know that this, this thing varies from church to church. Is that true? And I know that there are rules already in some churches. They don't take it. They don't care what you saw or what you had or how long you have been together once they find out that your genotypes are not compatible they advise you strongly and guide you towards leaving one another they say no please we can't take it we are not ready and from the human perspective please listen because some of you have insulted all these people let me tell you something from the human perspective History has shown us that these kinds of things have brought a lot of problems for families. SS marries SS or AS marries this and then they have children who keep dying or children who are having, you know, a lot of problems. The father has problems, the mother has problems and, you know, in quotes, they become like a liability to a lot of people. Family members, loved ones, they now kick the man out of his job. Now, what do you do? Look up because some of you probably are in that situation right now as I'm speaking and you're trusting God for guidance. So, your father or mother said, see you, this guy, you won't marry the person. For 10 years, you poor together. They say, ah, won't you marry? They say, no worry, we're organizing things. I say, this is what is happening. Late marriage or no marriage. This is one very serious reason. Now, if you don't believe in the supernatural, here's my kind advice. Quietly live. Did you hear what I said? I'm giving you an advice that may not make sense now. But I'm a, if you do not believe in the supernatural, what did I advise? It is my advice. I didn't say God told me. Paul will speak and say, I speak as a man. You may have your relationship programs and somebody may have another opinion. The reason is because, listen... If you do not believe in the supernatural, what the medical science said will happen, will happen. Are you listening to me? And you will live your remaining 30, 40, or 50, life, uh, or 50 years in misery and pain. Let me tell you the truth. I've had the opportunity to pray for people and families with these kinds of things. And I know that this is not nice. There are situations where the whole family father mother and the one or two sons they are all down what do you do and for the rest of your life there is torture from your family members we told you how many of you know that kind of thing well thank god we have married people we told you aaron we warned you venga you didn't hear you were in love now see see what has happened if you believe in the supernatural you will get up and do something about it Hello? That kind of supernatural that God will change it when he wants to change it. Uh -uh. That's not a valid supernatural. Alright? So, come sweetheart again. Now, I'm SS, she's SS. Both of you have come and you have, you have found out that this is a serious constraint. But both of you are convinced. Listen, let me tell you. I hope you know God is not an author of confusion. And I hope you know miracles still work. We have seen genotypes blood groups whatever change here so many of them now what what you would do listen i'm telling you what to do straight to the point you agree and say look do you believe this can work because if you are the only one who believes it the lady already in her mind she has left you she doesn't just want to embarrass you are you following me now you say let's pray ah, the lady goes back and says brother john i've not really left you it's just that let's be patching it things are getting messy here now you know ladies have a very funny way of putting one leg here they can detect when the bridge starts breaking they will tell you they will just stretch their leg 
London Bridge is falling down. So they'll, they'll just be part. So that whatever happens, they can wage themselves quickly. If you are involved in that, repent tonight in Jesus' name. Double dating is wrong. Period. I don't care what you have, what you, you watched in your Nigerian film and soup opera. What Oprah Winfrey told you, Niger uh, what, I want to say Nigerian film is wrong. I like Nigerian films. Don't... Double dating is period. Hallelujah. Do you, the Bible says, can two walk together except the Amos 3 3. So you must agree, sweetheart, do you believe? That God, are you convinced about this thing? Think about it again. If she needs time, don't be angry. She said, honestly, see, let me tell you something. Um, can you give me three days? Yeah, yeah. I've known three days. You don't, uh -uh. You, this, is, this is a very, very serious issue. Don't just get emotional and start shouting at the lady. Say, now nah, I'm agreeing. You are refusing. We have not even married. We're already quarreling. No, no. But if, listen, if you think both of you can work this out. Can I tell you something? Seek advice and start working it early. Is that true? Because there are some of us that are very stubborn and have gotten ourselves in trouble. No! This is the guy, your parents say, why don't see? Let me tell you. I believe in the words of elder so. I hope you're hearing me. I'm telling you the truth. Sometimes parents may not know why they are saying what they are saying. But I tell you, there is a depth of wisdom. You are, you are, remember our emotional obsession teaching. Hey, this thing is burning you. As your father or your mother is talking, it's entering here, flying out there. You are not here, you know. Fix this wedding date. Let's do this thing and let the devil be put to shame. But they are telling you, listen, listen. You will get married, you will dance that day, cut cake, and everybody will go. The people who come for your wedding, see, there is a difference between wedding and marriage. Correct? Yes. Wedding is valid for 24 hours. Your marriage begins. Fry plantain for me, honey, I'm down. No, no, please. I'm working in this house to bring money. Me too, am I not suffering what you are suffering? This is how the trouble starts. So if you know, if you think you can believe God for it, Honestly, I'm giving you a very honest and fair advice. Many men of God will spiritualize this thing I'm saying. And just tell you, don't worry, things, just believe, claim it, take it. Mm -mm. It has led to a lot of casualties. If both of you cannot believe God for it, cry, fast, have your last supper, and end the relationship. Don't break it. Believers don't break relationships. They end it with wisdom and grace and bless one another. But if you can believe God for it, then start making efforts. When it's time for miracle service, you say, ah, where are you? you say, I'm in the market. Say, leave that market. Oh, leave that market. We have something both of us have agreed upon. God will give you the miracle in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless you. Right? Let's hurry up. Number three geographic cultural and family factors right why do people experience late marriages or why don't people there are some families your parents have already given you warning right from when you were in primary school you didn't even understand what they were saying they said see bring you know this globe that is in our house map of the world they zoomed it to nigeria they said, any state I draw a pen, let me not see you there. Are you ready? Yes. Number one. Number two. There are parents of, there are geographic factors that even in the same state, they tell you it's not enough. Is that correct? In fact, some, even in the same village, they say, uh-uh. This clan had this, this in 1921. They had a problem. Now, let me explain something you, that many people may not understand. You see, during the time of our parents, the world was not as heterogeneous as it is right now. Is that correct? Many people live in yards and compounds. All the ladies used to go to the stream together. So the guys could time. Natina. They could just see and know that, okay, in the next 10 years, let me just allow this investment to grow. 
in the next 10 years, I can be able to come and... So, they knew themselves. The parents knew the parents of the other person. Is that correct? They fought together. They celebrated festivals together. They did a lot of things together. So, when you came and told your father that, ah, is Grace now, Mario? Where is Grace from? Sokoto, they say, ah, where exactly? Say, ah, I know the father now. Give me five. You're a very nice guy. This is the kind of thing we want. Geographic factors. What is the probability of finding somebody from your village who is born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, blessed, visionary? What is the probability? I, I, no, I want you to be very honest and realistic. What is the probability? So in our generation, there will be a lot of crossing of boundaries. Some of you, they wiped your whole village in war. You, don't even, you practically don't have a village again. You put migrated somewhere. So when your father or your mother is saying they should get somebody from where? The old republic, your old place or the new one? Some migrated to Cameroon. Some ran, you know, all of these things. Fulani, there are Fulani people that ran to Sokoto, some to Maiduguri, some to Gombe. So when you are saying a Fulani, from where? You must marry a Fulani. Wenga, a Fulani or nothing else. Which one? Because they've scattered to different places. Hallelujah. It's my personal opinion that that should not be a factor. However, listen, you, you know that I will always balance things. Are you ready now? Some of you are already sad looking at me. Ah. This is the reason why some people have not married. Sister Mary, ha -ha, till now, see my third child, oh, see I must wait until my change comes. Since you were in the university, now both of you are doctors, nothing. See, I'll wait, oh, I'll wait. cultural factors, geographic factors. And for many of the things that our parents do, what is their... I hope you know their, their excuses are legitimate, but we know more now. Are you following me? What's their excuse? When there is trouble, when there is fight, when you tear yourselves into pieces, they know your father, they know your mother, they can come and sit down. But where you cross boundary, Lagos and Maiduguri, who knows who there? They fought during the traditional wedding and promised themselves they will never look at themselves again. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm saying? Some of you don't believe. I'm advising you, you better free your spirit now. I'm giving you the reasons before we pray. Open your mind and say, Lord, you will not destroy me. For the Bible says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of good and not of evil. For other, other places, the parents say, Ah, the people in this place, they are witches and wizards. Let me tell you something straight to the point. The official religion of Africa was witchcraft. Every tribe, every state, everywhere. Is that clear? So don't start saying this state. They all, every who doesn't know them. Eh? Now you want to bring trouble for us. As if it was missionaries that started your own state. Now, look, let me tell you something. Witchcraft, idolatry was the bane of the day in Nigeria. Everywhere. Every strait has traditionalists, herbalists, has people who are practicing witchcraft. Killing people, eating, whatever it is. It's just that some have more than some. But everybody has it. Are, are you listening to me? I'm very serious, please. As you're laughing, I hope you're getting me. So don't ever use that as an excuse. Say these people, everybody from their village. They, no. And now listen, our parents, listen. Our parents have had so many experiences that validate their claims. 
So while you are trying to defend yourself, don't just look at them and say, old oh, generation. Because I tell you something, they have testimonies of people who did not listen. Are you following me now? And they got married running down the line 10, 20, 30 years. Some of them are still suffering today. So don't just kick what the parents are saying. Can I give you an advice? If you are crossing boundaries, no three things. Number one. Number one. Wickedness, territorial wickedness is real. Write it and never forget it. If you are crossing boundary to any state or any local government, be aware of the demonic predicaments around that place. And be sure that you are ready to take the burden. Please look up. I want to be very, very, I want to speak to you tonight. Look up, please. A lady, for instance, whose whole family, she has an extended family, all right? And say they are all Muslims. Are you following me now? And only the lady got born again. Are you listening to me? Maybe her father is this and that, her mother. There are a lot in their families. Now you are coming as a brother. You say, this is the lady I'm going to marry. I hope you know that there is a battle to fight there. Everybody answer me. If you pretend and spiritualize it and trivialize it, you are going to run into a lot of trouble. Is the battle because the lady is bad? no but you see when you are married you are not just married to the lady you are married to the lady and everything associated to her are you listening to me to her troublesome auntie her diabolic uncle they are all your relatives now her money mongering cousins her materialistic nephews all together that's why they sold the ashoke for you to see them on the wedding day we are now one Hallelujah. So when you are crossing boundaries, be very realistic. I'm telling you, be very what? One lady called me one time and I won't mention names, but her father is a bishop. You know, somewhere, I think somewhere around the maybe southern eastern side. And she told me that the guy buffs all his daughters with chicken before giving them out for marriage. The lady now, sorry. Are you listening to me? The elder sister, the father at her age, oh, whether whatever you he said, daddy, he said, look, you don't know what you grew up with. You are, we are the ones that have suffered this thing. Just keep quiet and let me buff you and you will go. So when it was the lady's turn now, she ran out of the house. So it was during her exodus that she called me. And she said, this is what they want to do to me. I said, you mean it? They said, they must do it. There is a covenant that had been running around their family. That that's what they must do. Listen, I want to talk to you tonight. Hallelujah. So the man must bath them with chicken. As they are, bath, they are making incantations. So they bath the lady. Her elder sister told her, I said, this is what I did, though. That what they plan with the fiancé is that immediately they finish. They just run mountain of fire straight. Lagos, about that express was straight. They went there for deliverance. So they said, if you can do it. But the lady said, but I see, it's not like I'm in ignorance. This is taking myself to go and give the devil. Are you following me now? This is the reason why certain parents may not want people from certain places. That leads me to the fourth point, demonic oppression. The reason why people do not get married, demonic oppression. Demonic oppression. We live in a church that is so unaware of the activities of Satan. We are all new creation in Christ. The Bible says do not be unaware. I know people have exaggerated things when it comes to Satan and the things of deliverance. But let me tell you something. Demonic oppression is real. Especially in marriage. Are you hearing me? I'm giving you a frank and candid advice. When you see us say, go out with somebody who is born again 
and serious with God. Some of you think, okay, you know, these guys have been... Demonic oppression is real. The euphoria of your emotional attachment will fade when those demons begin to deal with you. Hallelujah. Let me stop there. Second subtopic. So this is why people experience late marriage. Unreasonable, ridiculous expectations, health factors, geographical factors, demonic oppression. If you don't believe in marrying people from other places, pray. You can negotiate with God. He's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. If the trouble is too much, you can say, God, can you give me a brother from Kano that loves God? I'm from there. For God's sake, save me this headache. God will bring a brother. He will come for koinonia. He won't know what is bringing him. The answer to so God, No, God is faithful. Let me tell you, our relationship with God is on a personal basis. There is a way you can agree with God on some things and he will do it for you. I assure you. Hallelujah. Have I helped you? Because some of you are saying, can't we bend you? mean there's no way out. There is a way. There is a way. It's between you and God. Number two. The reasons for fight in homes and unfaithfulness. Marital fights and unfaithfulness. It's one thing to get married. It's another thing to live in that home. Is that true? Many of our homes and our marriages are shattered in pieces. And we need to find out what is wrong. Why do we have fights? Two people. Sorry. Do you accept this? What you didn't wait for them to finish talking. Do you take this lady as your wedding? What? Yes. You far by the grace of God. Yes. Two of you said you would you are you doing? Yes. Think about it. Oh, yes. Does anybody have anything any, against this marriage? Nobody's now. We declare you husband and wife. You people are hugging and kissing, and you are happy. Two years later, the man looks at you. Who did I marry? He wrote songs, called you the lily of the valley, called you all kinds of things. Sugar in his tea. Mosquito in his net. After two years, three years, there is fight. Can I tell you something? Let me run faster than myself and tell you, sex is not enough to preserve the strength of marriage because i have seen people with eight children how did they get the eight children i will kill you this is a man that slept with his wife to have eight children now he will kill her hallelujah so what are the reasons do you know listen Statistic tells us that one out of every two marriages in America ends up in a divorce within the first five years. Right now, this thing has gotten so bad that in many churches now, you go to church and go to court too. It wasn't really like that, but what is happening in this society now? A man can be married and leave his state and come somewhere. And just be strolling, come for koinonia. See a very nice lady like this, turn her mind like a pendulum, and then get married to her. Go and buy small golf and give the parents. The father will say, You must marry this guy, you must marry him. We have suffered, it's enough. Now you get married only to find out that you are the wife of somebody else's, you are a concubine. Why do we have fights? And then I want to tell you something. The rate of unfaithfulness, listen, this is a study I made by myself. The rate of unfaithfulness in Christian marriages. I was talking with my sister yesterday and she was telling me of a survey that they did in our local church, not somewhere else, our local church. Married women that are not submissive and ladies that are promiscuous, that have really spoiled, I don't mean... Uh, okay, you went and slept with somebody by mistake. Willful, willing, conscious, derailing from the things of God. When they announced the statistics to the church, parents were afraid. Parents were afraid. Fathers were afraid. Mothers. Nobody trusted themselves again. Which one are you in these statistics now? 
Because they didn't announce anybody's name. When my sister told me, he touched me. Hallelujah. Do you know right now, there is almost no trust in our homes. Hallelujah. Some of you, you are even in a relationship because of how the guy is behaving like an armed robber. Once he goes to his himself, you quickly carry the phone. Let me check. Who called? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then the guy will save the lady's name as Joseph. Oh, come on. We know these things. Say, ah, Joe. Yeah. When you have moved, you say, ah, why are you calling me by this time now? You don't know my wife is at home. Immediately I come. Have you delivered it? Okay, I'm coming to Lagos first thing in the morning. Please don't waste my time. I, I need to spend time with my wife. I found out that I've not been spending time with her. And she's laughing. Not knowing that the man is unfaithful. So why is this happening? I can act. If ministry didn't work, I would have done. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number one. The reasons why we have fights. Violating the love respect principle. How many of you remember our love respect principle? What's the principle? That husbands should do what? Love their wives. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 22 to 25. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, submit. You honor. I told you that love for a man means respect and honor. Nothing more, nothing less. To the degree to which you respect and honor your husband. That's the degree to which you love him. Hallelujah. And for the ladies, the degree to which you love her, you care for her, you give her time. Remember our five love languages. Number one, words of affirmation. Number two, eh? acts of service. Number three, receiving gifts. Only ladies are talking. Number four, quality time. Number five, physical touch no it's not we're talking marriage now so you don't need to start it the star was before you get married once the pastor says husband and wife god himself takes the star away until then god himself stamps it there if you force the door to open it will open hallelujah number one violating the love respect principle how many men don't respect their wives Two of them go for a program. You see the man disgracing the wife. How, have you seen some of our parents do that? Don't pretend as if, and you I need to be paining you. You see the woman will just keep quiet. Or the woman disgracing her husband. You go, there's small popcorn. You are about leaving. Uh, Madam, can I fetch for this? You are fetching. People are saying, what kind of woman is this? The husband is just standing. You don't know that you are bearing his image. The man is saying, honey, let's go. Say, I won't go. Let me do this. Do we have this in our house? And you are just fetching. The love respect principle. The love respect principle. All the guys say, I will love my wife. Say it, I will love my wife. And the lady say, I will honor my husband. So that's the number one reason. Number two. I won't talk much about that. We are not in a strict, only few people are married here, so I won't talk. Emotional dissatisfaction. Not satisfying themselves sexually and all of that. Leave it there. I'm not saying more. Hallelujah. Thank God there's marriage counseling. Go to your marriage counselor. Hallelujah. But emotional dissatisfaction. And this is not just sex. Spending time together, there is... An emotional dimension is limited before you get married. But when you get married, come on, it's part of what keeps the bond. It is a very serious reason why men, listen please. A woman who is busy, you are a tailor, you are a contractor, you have restaurant, you are, you are in French school, you are learning another language. Every time you are your husband will say, oh, you, you are embarrassing him. You are making him beg you to sleep with you. He will keep quiet. One day he will stop talking to you. Ah! You find out that your house help is happy, walking in the house, very excited. Madam, how are you? Fine. How is everything? God has been faithful. That's a sign that there's fire on the mountain. I'm giving you an honest 
and a very candid advice. Listen, let me tell you something. God who designed intimacy is not foolish. Are you listening to me? Violating any of God's principles, tightening, lack of intimacy, whatever it is, will cost you a lot. Sisters, let me advise you. You are not in your house. You are supposed to preserve and help the man. Do you know the wife is supposed to cover for the man? Your husband is a nice, handsome man of God. He goes to minister in a convention. God moves and honors you. You are there snapping. And they are saying, how does it feel to be, you know, this bishop's wife? You are talking. One other lady is giving him compliments. Say, sir, uh, please, God gave me this prophetic instruction. I, I need to come and clean your shoes, clean your trousers. The man says, sir, I insist. Will you, will you hinder an innocent lady? Like the man says, all right, if you insist. Aha, uh -huh. you were not there. The media is carrying your face. You are happy. You never had it that good. Now you are enjoying it. Many women are careless about their men. I'm not saying just be irresponsible and you can't allow the man rest. He's having a meeting. You are in front of the, the meeting door. You are saying whatever this meeting is, it will finish in my presence here. There are women like that. This is insecurity. Your husband wants to book tickets. You are there. How many people? No, no. Trust. There must be trust. But in the midst of it, there are efforts that you must make. Are you listening to me? Don't allow any... You know, Christian homes, you can see a woman just come at an odd time and say, I want to come and visit your husband. She's calling him all kinds of names. An unbeliever will tell you straight there. I hope you know, unbeliever women, they, won't talk, they will say, please, call it jealousy, call it whatever. Let me tell you, let it not happen again. Church people, say, if I talk like that, what of in the fellowship? Uh-huh. It's until the man travels for a business trip four months. You are not there. Later on, one of his friends that cannot keep his mouth shut to say, Madam, I need to talk to you. This thing is paining me and the way I trust you, I must tell you. You see that hotel there? Your husband is there. Go and meet him there. For four months, he has been there abroad. <laughs> Emotional dissatisfaction is a very serious issue. Are you listening to me? I didn't want to touch the issue, but it's becoming necessary. Hallelujah. Brother, you are fasting. One week, two weeks, immediately you finish. You started Maranatha fast. You finish Armageddon fast. Now, wow. Why did you marry? Why did you marry? You would have stayed alone. There must be a place. When you get married, define your lives. Are you listening to me? It's very important. There's a book Ora Roberts wrote. One of the reasons why he said he was successful in ministry was he had very close sexual intimacy with his wife. I don't mean, I hope you know what I'm talking about. Some of you, your mind is already, uh -uh. to the pure, all things are pure. Hallelujah. Number three, financial issues. Sorry, my dear. Are you tired? Financial issues. Very important. Why there are fights on faithfulness, marriage, financial issues. Poverty is a very bad thing. I hope you know. Lack is a very bad thing. Finance, lack of finance has led to the breaking of many good homes. Hallelujah. Let me rush. Number four, spiritual factors. Spiritual factors. We are going to be dealing with this very extensively tonight. Spiritual factors. You married a very nice, loving, virtuous, wonderful lady. Now the lady has changed. You don't even know who you married again. Or the man has changed. The man didn't used to drink. He didn't used to smoke. He was a brother. He was even an esco in your fellowship. That's what made you like him. Now he has changed. He has a special fridge. Cronenberg. Star. Name them. They pay him salary. He comes up. 
300,000 or 200,000, he comes back with 5,000. His friends have helped him finish it. Comes to vomit around. And you are saying, it wasn't like this. There are many families that have these unanswered questions. And the recommendation they gave them is go for counseling. Let me tell you something. This is not an issue of counseling. Are you hearing me? There are forces of darkness militating against families. And if you do not stand to take your position in Christ and conquer these things, you will be surprised. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Spiritual factors. You just got married and you found out that this man suddenly developed epilepsy. He wasn't epileptic. There was no problem. Stress that you cannot, you cannot imagine. You give birth to children. This child has this problem. This child has this problem. This child has this problem. It's not normal. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. The third area I want to talk about very quickly is the issue of barrenness. The reason for barrenness and unfruitfulness in marriage. In Mark 11 verse 12 to 14, when Jesus saw a barren tree, he cursed it. That means God cannot be the author of barrenness. Say amen. Are you listening to me? The command he gave man, Genesis 1 28, he said, be fruitful, multiply, For a long time, the issue of barrenness disturbed me because I've had the opportunity to pray for many people that have suffered from barrenness. And so it was a personal, it was a personal pain in my heart. And I wanted to find out why. Hallelujah. Now, the general reason for barrenness is health challenges, you know, all kind, all the whole medical things, fibroids, no womb, stories, stories, and all of that. I won't go into that. But I want to give you something very shocking. Mm. I'm already sensing the anointing of the Holy Spirit. 98%, listen, 98% of barrenness issues in marriage is a resultant effect of satanic activities, either in the life of the individuals or tied to their family. Please listen to me carefully. Please, can you hear me? This is very serious. I want to have your attention now. 98%. Sometimes people see ladies or people that are barren and just say, ah, maybe this lady was promiscuous. No, stop judging people. I know healthy people, brothers, sisters, people who loved God, kept themselves. Now the man gets married and they start telling him all kinds of reports from the hospital. Oh, you cannot give birth. Now the lady gets married. Suddenly they tell her, there is a growth in your stomach. Where did it come from? What did I do? Listen, please. Please give me strings. Hallelujah. Strings. 98% of barrenness in marriage. Please listen. Because someone may be a savior. Some of you, it's time for you to set your loved ones free. This is why God is bringing this word. People have been asking questions. Why do we have this sister barren? Ah, we knew this sister, this brother barren. Can I tell you something? It is purely demonic. Purely demonic. I once spoke to a lady years ago. I wish there's a way I can see that lady again. Ah, knowledge. Years ago, this lady came to me and she told me she was crying. And she said, Sir, if I tell you what is wrong with me, you will not believe it. She talked to me. She said, I don't have a womb. It's not like I lost it. No fallopian tube, no nothing. I'm as empty as a man. Nobody knows it. She's not told anybody because some of you won't keep quiet. Hallelujah. And this lady was talking to me. Listen, you know, and then those times I was saying, Abba, don't worry. Um, you know, God will do something. God will do all of that. And the lady looked at me and she said, will I marry? I said, Abba, you marry. Do you know the question the lady asked me? She said, can you marry somebody like me? Aha. 
That was when the thing dawned on me that this lady was not playing games with me here. You know, sometimes you see people come for counseling. You don't know what is eating them up. I looked at this lady. I said, Lord, do you know after I left this lady, I had to go and cry to God. I said, Lord, give me the power for creative miracles or let this kind of people never come to me again. They should rather go to a man of God who can solve their problem. This is too bad. This lady left my place crying. Now you will see this lady and think she was promiscuous, isn't it? Because we are very judgmental in the body of Christ. Once you see anything, you just carry your mouth and start saying things. Uh-uh. The Bible says, judge not. There's nothing. They, they said she was supposed to be a man or something, something, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, all those doctors, medical, we have a doctor here. He gave a testimony. You know, all those things they taught you people. Hallelujah. There are issues like that. A man gets married to his wife. One year, no child. Two years, no child. Three years, no child. What is wrong? There are even to make matters worse. There are times that they go to the hospital, the man is fine. Have you seen people like that? Fine. Nothing is wrong. The woman is fine. Three weeks ago, I was, three weeks now, yes, I was counseling and a woman came to me. Very interesting case. This woman was pregnant. Maybe you would say it's about six, seven, but they would go to the scanning machine. Huh? Ladies. And then they'll find out that there's nothing. It's not like there's fibroid or mm -mm, nothing. Yeah. So when you hear me talk like this, some of you just sit down saying, I beg this. No, let me tell you. God has granted us. You can ask the ministers. They will tell you. Counseling opens your eyes to things you will not imagine. Hallelujah. One day after Koinonia, a lady walked up. No, I saw her. And I knew that something was wrong with her. And I called her. I said, what is wrong with you? And she laughed. She didn't want to tell me. And I asked her. I said, what is it? She said, there's something. It's like it looks like a worm, but a little bigger than the worm in her private part. It's a living thing. No, I'm, I'm being very honest with some of you so that you wake up tonight. We're not playing games here. We're going to pray. How do you explain this now? And the lady was looking. Immediately I looked at her. I saw the spirit. For this purpose was the son of God made manifest. There are some of you, listen. I want to teach you something tonight. 98%. Delay in marriage. For some of you, it's a curse around your family. Pronouncements and projections. Listen, your salvation affects you, not your territory. Are you listening to me? Let me teach you something here. Your salvation does not change your territory. Otherwise, there will not be terrorists in Nigeria. Your salvation does not change your territory. It takes an understanding of God's word and the operation of the anointing to put the devil where he belongs and release yourself from shackles of darkness. There are many people here. There are all kinds of yokes on your life. Please listen to me. There are many of you here. You sleep in the night. Men come to you to have sex in your dreams. They use the face of your father, mother, the face of another woman, the face of animals. You've just been laughing. That, that's, that's, that's a question mark happening there. The church does not deal with these things. We shy away. Many of you here, I tell you, because we come from an African continent. Our children will not need to go through this. But there will be a generation that must pay the price. And it so happens that we are the ones in between. Don't let anybody fool you. America is over 200 years. Some people paid the price and passed the heritage of godliness. My children will not need to go through this. Are you listening to me? But someone has got to go through this. And it so happens that you are the one. So let me announce to you, for some of you who have been trivializing things, you've been confessing God's word. People come, some of, listen, I, 
I want to deal with some things this night. This is pre-miracle service. There are many of you that have been oppressed. You get up, you are bedwetting. You cannot explain it to anybody. You are not bad. People cannot understand. You need help. But the church will not arise. We will keep giving all kinds of flimsy explanations. Some of you have an unusual urge for sex. You cannot, you love God, but you can't see a man or woman. This is not normal. These are operations of spirits. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? There are many of you, there's been, there's been constant happenings around your family. Everybody that marries, there is a divorce. It, it kept happening. It kept happening. Are you ready to break that cycle or you just want to watch and be saying, oh, don't worry, it won't happen to me. You will be surprised. Because it's already happening to some of you right now. This is why God gives gifts to the body. Hallelujah. Let me teach you something about spirits. Look at me. Some of you do not know that there are territorial spirits. Listen, please. That are are willfully given access over territories i pray for people for deliverance almost every day and the demons shout and what they always say is we have legal access in this body in the book of jude the bible says when archangel michael came to take the body of moses what happened satan was there claiming the body too satan is still claiming the bodies of people when a demon leaves a man, the Bible says, it will go through arid regions. Hear me? Seeking for a place of refuge. He said, not finding any. He will say, let me arise and go to my house. He has gone, but he's still calling the man his house. Hmm. Hallelujah. I was born again. I was a preacher and demons were still oppressing me. Are you listening to me? I confess the word. I read the books you have read. Let me tell you something. I was moving terribly in the anointing. But demons will press me in the night. I will sleep in the night and see them come. My shouting the name of Jesus was as helpless as something was wrong. This is what has been happening to some of you. You have a dream. They are pressing you. They are oppressing you. You can't even shout Jesus. You are about to write a serious paper. The devil just comes. Somebody just sleeps with you in the dream. That's the end of it. Nothing works again. Don't let anybody deceive you. We will not lie to you in this place. The Bible says, Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. Tonight, whatever has held your destiny will bow. This is the... Re See, you, this is what many people like MFM and the rest call spirit husband and spirit wife. I know many people say, ah, there's nothing like that. Just shut your mouth. Oh. Shut your mouth quickly. Because you see, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. The Bible says the things that appear in this realm, that the things that are material were made from the things that are immaterial. There are, there are tribes that covenanted people to people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He said right from when you were in your mother's womb, I knew you, I called you. That means spiritual things can happen right from your mother's womb. It's in your Bible. He said while you were in your mother's womb, I called you already to be a prophet. Hallelujah. And there are many innocent believers not getting married, getting barren, giving birth to all kinds of satanic things. Do you know why Satan is frustrating you? Because you or your parents have made a decision to serve the Lord. Do you know, I was telling someone, I cannot remember, with the crude traditional african ways of giving birth sir we didn't have difficulty in giving birth when a woman is giving birth they will bring fire and they will even use knives or something to cut the placenta yet women were giving birth freely do you know why because their allegiance was unto satan some of our parents got up and said look this is over and the devil says you have declared war this is the mark and some of you sit down and just laugh you like a cool smooth nice message that just tells you everything is all right yes potentially but you need to get up and make it so it says we have seen everything under his feet he said but we do not yet see i'm, I'm sorry he said he was raised made a little lower than the angels crowned with glory and honor he said but we do not see all things under his feet 
That means all things have not yet come experientially. Hallelujah. There are, the Bible says, blotting out every handwriting. What, is, what was Paul seeing when he was saying this? What did Paul see? Where did they write the handwritings? There are all kinds of diabolic ordinances against people. Some of you, this is what is responsible for your marital predicament. No man comes around you or only married people. Only married people. Don't say the, there is nothing. No. By now you know that mistakes don't happen in the realm of the spirit. The Lord told me to preach this and set people free this night. Are you listening to me? Delay. Delay. Nothing works. A man will come into your life. You will do the introduction. Later he will get up and become a strange man to you. Don't you see what is happening in the realm of the spirit? Many of you are not reading the handwritings on the wall. Counseling is not the solution. The devil needs to experience the power of the kingdom. This is what will put him to flight. He said, how awe-inspiring are your ways. Through the greatness of thy power, not through noise, not through counseling, will thy enemies submit themselves. There are ladies, any man that comes into your life, this spirit will frustrate the guy and bastardize his life. You are a good person. There are ladies, anytime you enter a relationship with them, the guy must die. It has happened and they are just giving useless explanations. Beautiful lady, virtuous, submissive. No guy will ever see you. Listen, some of you, once a guy sees you, all he wants is to sleep with you. No responsible man can see you. Only touts and armed robbers and drug barons, they are the ones who can see you. Something is wrong. Is someone hearing me tonight? We are going to pray. If you came here, this is how we are rounding up this series. Hallelujah. Some of you would have been married since, but because of this wickedness, the devil laying claims over your marital life and destiny. Every night, some of us cannot sleep snakes everywhere to the point that some of you even see them physically i've counseled people one time a lady came inside we were counseling immediately the lady came inside she just came in what the next thing i saw a snake maybe like twice this just by her side i said my dear what is this that i'm seeing and she said sir this is why i came what is this thing some of you come from royal families. Ordinances have been made against you. Let me tell you, if you do not rise up in the name of the Lord, be ready, there is trouble. The day you gave your life to Christ, you declared war. The devil marked the line and it takes authority to put him where he belongs. Joe, you were with me in Mina. Please stand up. He was with me when I went for the crusade in Mina. What was the rampant case there? Blindness, deafness, the women, once they give birth, they become deaf and dumb. Ask him, he was there. The first day of the crusade, God moved and mighty things happened. The second day of the crusade, after the crowd, they created a special session for the sick people. If you're a man of God, you will tell us today. They lined from one end, a large crowd to the other end. Ask him, there were over maybe 60 or so people those days when we didn't have this understanding we'll come and be struggling trying to heal the sick Ah, uh -uh, now we know better i knew that this is about a territory this is about a territory i settled it in my secret place more than 40 of the people i was lifting them from their wheelchairs stand up see once the strong man no man will enter into a man's house and spoil the goods without binding the strong man I give you spiritual knowledge many of you god will set you on fire you need to go back home and say aha now i know the answer this is it this is it no guesswork again this is it hallelujah i 
belly came to the people. Just one touch. Ear open. Eyes open. The mute were speaking. Now this before it will be a spectacular miracle for me. But now I know better. There are many of you. You, are, you think dating.com or whatever is the solution. Let me tell you tonight. You are going to humble yourself. There are many of you. In the, you see all kinds of things. Some of you are Christians. But there are demonic, diabolic ordinances. I once prayed for a lady who told me that voices, she hears voices. They tell her the things to do. She was walking one time and this thing ladies like putting on their waist. It was on the ground and the voice said, carry it and put. No man except you are on fire. See brothers, let me tell you, if you are not on fire, I don't know how to help you. You will fall like a leaf. There are many ladies that come for counseling. As soon as they enter, I see the spirit of seduction. And I know that if not because I've, I've declared my stand unto God, you will be surprised. Because they tell me how many pastors, even in this area, that they sleep around with. Men and women who stand on your pulpits and speak nonsense. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm angry in my spirit because some destinies will be opened. Some of your parents, in a bid to help you when you were sick or something, ran to the village. Is that true? Please answer me. Is that true? You were getting admission and they ran. They came and said, okay, please, we want her to pass this. They did it out of innocence because that's all they knew. But let me tell you something. The devil never gives you anything free. Make no mistakes about it. You will collect the goods now and pay for it later on. Okay. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? This is the problem with many of you. Your kingdom reigns. His kingdom reigns. Above all. Above all. Lord, your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns. Above all. Above every cultural kingdom. Above every ordinance of darkness, your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns above all. Above all, yeah, Lord, your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns above all. Let me tell you something about the operation of these wicked spirits of darkness. They will not only wreck your marital life, your academics will be shattered, your personal self worth shattered, sicknesses you cannot account for. This is what many of you are suffering. Please hear me tonight. Don't trivialize what you are listening to. This could be the key. That will help you maritally. This could be the key. I tell you when you dethrone Satan. You will be shocked. The way doors will start opening for you. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray. Enough is enough. You can't be living like this. Except God has not called us. Except God has not sent us. Part of our mandate is to set the captives free. I'm not a pastor. Our mandate is to set the captives free. There are many of you that you, you, are, you are trusting God for marriage this year. But the way things are going, except God intervenes, it will not work. It will not work. Hallelujah. There are some of you, you are a row of ladies in your house. Nobody has married. A row of people, four, five ladies. Nobody has married. One brother just comes. Two days is not serious. Let me tell you. If this is my wife. And Bishop Stan wants to come and collect her. If I'm a responsible man. You think I'll just allow him. What will you do? You will fight unto death. They laid cold over the body of Moses. There are many barrenness issues. 
some of your loved ones they are busy insulting your sister calling her a witch and see listen i must balance this before we pray listen this is where you need to be careful with prophets because this lady look at me please let me teach you something listen this sister here can be affected by a lot of demonic things from her she may not even know as a prophet i can stand and i can see a demon behind this lady it does not mean she's a witch this is demonic oppression are you hearing me i may pray for her you see people who came for koinonia here roll on the floor they are not witches many prophets have caused trouble in the body of christ they keep blaming people a woman comes now you come and pray for her a woman came to me she came to complain about her husband they were actually a woman brought them two of them they were quarreling the woman was this and that and that and that and then the husband now started calling the woman a witch that a prophet told him his wife is a witch he should, he should leave her alone as i was talking to her i now saw the spirit and the woman started manifesting the man said you see you see what i'm saying confirmation immediately i, I finished the spirit in him jumped up and wanted to run out he scattered the things there scattered my table when he finished i said who now is a witch among two of you are you listening to me very important you may not know the things you are dabbling into and if spiritual knowledge is not given unto you you will not the bible says through wise counsel make war some of you will be settling things. This is pre-miracle service. I tell you, don't miss next week's miracle service. What God will do in this place will surprise you. If you are coming here and you are not blessed, we are fake. Are you listening to me? If nothing is changing, that means, that means maybe we went to one shrine for something to pour on our head. But I tell you, there is a living God in this place. Are you ready? We are going to pray. Go back, sweetheart. One prayer point and I'll begin ministering. Listen. You are going to pray this night tonight is not a night of shame tonight is the night when you will end some things some of you have struggled with pornography master you can't help it this is demonic you don't conquer demonic things by willpower brothers it takes the anointing it takes the anointing there are many of you you can't keep one relationship you love a lady two days later you don't love her again you think something is wrong you go to another lady two days later you can't love her again you you are married but you can't see another woman move come on this is demonic the bible says he that conceals his sin shall not prosper we are going to rise tonight everybody rise up i tell you the devil the devil is in trouble whatever allowed you to come here tonight is in trouble hallelujah now we are going to pray just for three or four minutes you are going to pray and say lord whatever stronghold in my life whatever i don't care where it's coming from lord this night you are going to visit me some of you know what i'm talking about the snakes in your dreams the men that come to oppress you these satanic things Outside, inside, make sure you are praying. Enough is enough. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness Satan you are in trouble tonight Satan you are in trouble the strong man against families tying their marital destinies your time is up tonight Pray like a priest. Pray like a priest. Pray for your family members. Pray for your loved ones. Pray for the buried people in your family. That barrenness. You have come to your end tonight. 
light shines in the darkness one more minute come on pray shake it take it take it enough is enough as soon as zion travels shake it take it for koto se break it pakata ma prosko break it reket leketa so proko to bariakata ba Hallelujah. 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 Oh, it will end. It will end. Please be in the mode of prayer. We are serious in this place. If your neighbor is distracting you, tell him, don't distract me. Don't distract me. Don't distract me. Enough is enough. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Listen. I'm going to pray for people right now. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me people. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for people. Oh, there will be mass, mass, listen, mass emancipation. Some of you who did not know that what is happening to you is demonic, you'll be surprised. Don't forget about your neighbor. Hallelujah. This spirit that comes to oppress you, hear me, whether carrying the face of your brother, your mother, another woman i don't care telling you they are married to you listen to me i tell you i see fire in this place hallelujah and i'm going to pray whether you fall down or not is, is not the issue right now believe and expect there is a lady in that row i see a spirit manifesting it's a snake katela kanda hallelujah listen Hallelujah. We are going to shout the name Jesus once. My God, my God. Hallelujah. I tell you, I want you to shout it with faith. There is noise that will hit the gates of darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now hear me. Hear me. There are many of you. Snakes. Snakes. The Bible says, I have given you authority, Luke 10, 19, over snakes. There is a reason why the Bible calls snakes and scorpions. Lift your hands. I'm going to pray. The power of God will move in a mighty way. Anyone here that has been initiated into any demonic thing, whether you know it or you do not know it, right now, Lord Jesus, let the power of God move. Be it in dreams. Move. I set you free. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Be free. Be free. Be free. Come out of her. Out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out of her. The children shall not suffer the iniquity every occult initiation every initiation through sex through dreams that will close the, the doors of your marital life i challenge it i challenge it Hallelujah. Let her go. Come out of her. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. This is a snake. Come out. Come out right now. Out of her. Come out. Go. Go right now. Listen, you are being delivered though. Don't wait till you fall. Something is happening. The presence of God is in this place. Hallelujah. 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 
Lady, say after me, I'm wonderfully and fearfully made. My body, look at me. Look at me. Come. Come. Leave her, leave her. Shall the captives be delivered? Let this girl go now. Let this girl go now. Fire of the Holy Ghost is against you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Listen. Do you know for some of you, this is what spilled over into your academics. Many of you may not know. This is why no matter what you do, things don't happen. Don't miss miracle service. Sister, come. This is what you have suffered. Come, you. The lady put in her hand. Come out. Come, it's time for God to help you. No, you, you. The lady with pink, come. Please hurry up. We're out, we're out of time. There's fire burning all over this building. That devil... Look at me, sister. You have suffered. Your academics is not very good. This is a spirit. You are not lazy. Look at me. Look at me. Hallelujah. I set you free. It will cough out something now. That devil of darkness. In the name of Jesus. Let this girl go free. In the name of Jesus. Now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Salama. 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 Let the fire run through your body. I ignite a passion for the things of the spirit in you. both of your hands let her go so she can stop come out of her now give her visions oh lord give her visions give her visions let your eyes be open to spiritual in the name of the lord jesus christ hallelujah Ushers, please come, all of you. Please, quickly, 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 let's save time. Now the Lord is that spirit. The Lord says, I should release upon you the anointing for academic excellence. This is what I'm praying for you for. This is not an impartation for academic excellence. Something will happen to your mind that will surprise you. Believe it. Some of you really need this prayer. So I'll pray for you. As I pray for you, the hand of God will touch you. I feel the fire of God upon my heart. I have come to the end of my step. Take over. I prophesy to you, step into a level of supernatural academic exploits by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Lord Jesus, step into unusual levels of mental acumen. Whatever is an academic mountain, 
in the name of Jesus I command that it crumbles before you we command the rain of carryovers to go I command every academic issue doesn't matter how difficult it is I agree with you I release the faith of God in the name of Jesus God bless you hallelujah but now you know that our job here is just to align to the Holy Ghost it doesn't matter what we have no business with religion in this place hallelujah no business at all our job is to flow I see a plane flying over you stand up what is this that I see the Lord is showing me a plane flying over you and I'm seeing writings on tables what do you do you are writing I'm seeing you writing on table and I'm seeing planes flying God is opening doors of international it will happen you will have God will open your works because I'm seeing you writing on a table the Lord is and I'm seeing planes flying over you the Lord will take you far beyond you believe that hold my hands let me pray for you let your writing step into a new dimension hallelujah praise the Lord sometimes I don't know why God just flows like this you really cannot predict what it is that hallelujah can do impartations, can bless. Can. It really doesn't matter what it is. Your job is to be expectant and open. Hallelujah. When you come for koinonia, we can be talking about how to enter a relationship and the Holy Spirit is setting men on fire. This is, this is not your church. This is a strange place that we do not even know what to call it. That's why we call it koinonia. Koinonia is not the name. Koinonia is a, a description, an attempt to give a caption of what the Holy Spirit does to people. Hallelujah. I welcome you and we thank God for what He's doing. Many of you may not know why all these impartations and these things happen. Hallelujah. Even if you do not understand, just give thanks because God is certainly not wasting His time. Hallelujah. One by one by one by one see him blessing people touching people hallelujah and sometimes the Lord opens my eyes and I see the angels of the Lord and I see them directing me towards certain things that's why sometimes we do all these stupid and crazy things that we do on stage doesn't make sense breaks every rule of Bible college and ministry ethics but it works and that's what people want results not stories not noise people are tired of jargons the Bible says when I came to you I did not come with the excellency of men's speech but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith your faith will not be grounded upon the wisdom of men but upon the power of God don't make your church or your fellowship when you become pastors and leaders don't let your congregation be places where the devil just comes and rides in and out freely because you are looking for money and eating food and running with no discernment. Let it be a place of fire. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. We thank you for your grace. Hallelujah. Now, we've been considering a series on family life. You will be so blessed tonight in the name of Jesus. I hope you're writing something. Now, when it comes to the subject of relationship and family life, it's very, very broad. Um, it really cannot be exhausted because you are dealing with human beings here. Hallelujah. You're not dealing subjects about faith and so on and so forth. You can exhaustively discuss them, but when it comes to issues of relationship, and family life is very broad every every family is a peculiar case on its own hallelujah 
so it's very difficult to be able to encapsulate a principle that works as it were 100 percent and the only hope we have for that is the word of god opinions of men suggestions from counselors can only go so far there are many geographical differences and so on and so forth so because of all of these things um, our focus please understand this our focus on the relationship and family life series is to cover number one the principles of entering a relationship that's the first aspect pastor jake started it and then i was able to touch that last week just to guide us on the preparation and the process of entering a relationship a godly relationship then number two and that's what we'll be discussing today maintaining your relationship whether marriage or marriage slash relationship you can write it we'll be sharing some principles and then generally principles for successful marriage like i said we can only touch so far and we'll pray we have a goal in the family life series to be able to guide us and we have discovered that these are the major areas hallelujah our congregation is predominantly made up of young people and so we have to focus our teachings um, so we spoke about the preparation and the principles the process of entering a relationship you can get the teachings they are free please make sure you get it if you don't get it you may have a hard time trying to follow up with us now i had so many text messages from ladies this week hallelujah so many questions you cannot imagine hallelujah some of you were writing questions that i know is you sir what if there's somebody you just know that they are talking about themselves they want to use third party eventually you forget that you are using third party communication and then you say what if there are some there's somebody and then the brother tells you you just know that they are not why don't you tell me this is my problem and this and that hmm? one lady sent a text and says sir you have to talk about this thing today i mean she like three or four pages and she really wanted it by god's grace we'll talk about some of these things i appreciate only one guy only one guy sent me a text hallelujah only one guy ladies god bless you don't keep quiet until you find the right answers it's better to talk than to act foolishly is that correct ask your questions don't keep quiet about it until you are absolutely satisfied there's a saying in Hausa that the person who is always inquiring about the road will not be missing. But the one who says, I know the road. Then when it backfires, you begin to blame people. Okay, so, we're going to be talking about something very interesting. Now, there are two books that I would recommend and most of our teachings will come from some of those books. Number one, Gary Chapman, Five Love Languages. Don't say, ah, I've read it. Just keep quiet. Don't, let, don't even start this night. Keep quiet and listen. Number two, Love and Respect, Dr. Emerson Egrich. Powerful books. They are believers. They love God. They are very, very serious with God. Time-tested principles they've been into marriage counseling and relationships using biblical perspectives for more than three decades and so we'll be teaching around this and of course the greatest of all is the word of god hallelujah okay so two scriptures before we start off tonight once again turn laugh with your neighbor give him a hug a shake do it quickly tell him i wish you good luck in today's ride doesn't matter how the the plane goes be sure we will land we must land before the grace hallelujah first peter 3 verse 7 first peter 3 7 
while I was preparing this note, I was laughing. I was already imagining some of you. You know, one day, I, I, am I? Sometimes I feel like I'm a clown on stage. When I'm trying to be serious, some of you are really laughing. Likewise, ye husbands. Don't say I'm not married. You will be married. So listen. Likewise, ye husbands. Dwell with them who? The wives. Okay, if you read the preceding verses. Dwell with them according to... All the brothers, read it. One, two, read. Likewise. Who are the husbands? Likewise, us, we men. We will dwell with them according to... So the Bible says you live with a woman according to... It didn't say according to love. Are you following me now? Look, when it comes to women, you, oh, you can coexist according to... How many of you have roommates that you love, but you know next session, you are certainly not going to stay together? Do you hate them? But there is no knowledge. No wonder it's ladies that are raising their hands. The brothers can manage. The ladies cannot take it again. Because it takes knowledge to dwell with a woman. Ladies can be as complicated as laptops. I was thinking of what to say. My mind was booting. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I want to talk about a few... Listen, please. What I want to talk about right now is very important. Please. If you are sleeping now, it's the time to wake up. Listen very carefully with your eyes, your spirit, your mind, whatever you can use to listen. I want to talk about something. Everybody write. Emotional obsession. Very interesting word. We are going to discuss it. Emotional obsession. We are talking of maintaining your relationship now or maintaining your marriage. Look up please. 90 percent of relationships including christian relationships 90 percent of believers enter relationships among other reasons because of what i call emotional obsession you know what an emotional obsession is an emotional obsession is that that feeling huh brother that is like how do i describe it now songs of solomon says love is stronger than death that's the kind of feeling where out of your whole 24 hours the best is the five minutes you were able to speak with the sister so two guys one brother one lady quick ella come and stand quickly Ooh. Abel, appreciate them quickly. Please come and stand. My brother, stand. So, Abel, Elijah, sorry, it doesn't matter. I'm you, uh, it's an example. Am I calling him Elijah? Oh, yeah. Now, Elijah has been attending Koinonia, he knows that she's in prayer band. And now, Elijah is praying. Elijah is before him. Elijah cannot sleep. You wake up by three and you're just sitting down. Elijah, what is wrong? He said, truly, me too. I don't know. You call every one of your roommates Ella. Sorry, um, Ella, Sam. Sorry. This, this is called... It's not wrong. Are you listening to me? It's not wrong. Emotional obsession. Or she... she she wakes up by three o'clock in the night and picks her biro and on her pillow she's now drawing flowers people are sleeping there's no light you are using your phone drawing flowers oh we know it oh we don't need to come to your hostel to know it
Then you draw a hand, Elijah's hand, collecting the flower. And that's that drive. You come for fellowship, you are sweating, you've not seen Ella. Ah, Sam is, you are covering my view, Sam. You are just looking at Ella. If per adventure you see Elijah, you come early, but you sit down outside. You are waiting until the arrival of Ella, and then you start laughing. That's when your, your praise and worship becomes living full of life full of power they say greet your neighbor you've not greeted the people around you you've gone hello how are you even you can't help it you can it's a fuel that you cannot quench hallelujah now listen and this is most for ladies because you see it takes a long time for ladies to arrive there. Guys get that easily. As easy as it comes, just goes. You are in a dinner and you look at Ella and you are like, Hey! God, talk to me or I will talk to you. Talk to me or I will talk. Somebody must talk to somebody this night. Hallelujah. Then one morning you are passing and you just see the lady in the morning. And she just pack her hair anyhow. And you are like, ah! God, please don't say anything. Is this the lady? So, that this emotional obsession is very impulsive in guys it takes a while for it to crystallize in ladies but when it catches them hallelujah i'm sure they know themselves that's why they run away the moment they start seeing any guy because they know what can happen it's like super glue you will sit down there when it catches you free bus transport going on uh, after after the grace go you would trek not because you there was no space in the bus you were waiting has she gone ross and the guy there's always a witness helping you and encouraging you say so, oh yeah you just do as if he's looking at the protocol and he's just looking and he comes she's around yeah yeah go down emotional obsession now this is powerful because it's really the distinguishing factor. It's what helps you listen. See, look at two guys shaking themselves. I saw two of you. I saw you. And I congratulate you for shaking yourselves. I wish you a safe ride, safe journey. We'll be ready to help you wherever. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, please understand. This emotional obsession is very powerful because that's what can make a brother to use his money for lunch and buy a recharge card and be patient sleep is drowsing his eyes but he's praying waiting for five minutes past 12. the guy is just strolling his roommates are starving they bought gary he kept his own money it's called obsession where the energy came from you were not fasting but you've not eaten yet you are not bothered you are not bothered five minutes past 12 your eyes will just clear you just start flashing hoping that the lady will flash back once the lady flashes back whether mtn whether there's network or no network if there is only one spot near your room even if it's a window you stand like this you can stand later you find out ah, five minutes to four you are just hissing this thing is entering you here coming out here it's called obsession At least since it does not happen for every lady or every guy, it helps you to be able to narrow down your decision and it helps you know that you are making a good decision. Are you following me? But the trouble is this. Most guys or most ladies really, that's why about 90% of ladies enter a relationship and two weeks later they feel like going out. You know why? Because emotional obsession cannot be the fuel for your relationship are you following me now let me tell you something every relationship including between you and jesus christ every kind of relationship at a point must take faith and a factor other than just your emotions to sustain it are you hearing what i'm saying very important now hold on Two of you are going out. Let's assume it has worked for you now. Finally, doesn't matter what happened in between. The long 
and short is now this has worked they are going out suddenly this brother now starts reducing his time from one one hour 45 minutes 15 minutes and it just stops at the 10 minutes mark and this lady is busy asking herself come on is that how it's happening in your own relationship because i don't understand these guys who so guys are very funny before we started going out he used to call me for 30 minutes but now i don't i can't understand why it's only two or three minutes let me tell you something most ladies love the euphoria and the excitement you took her to mr biggs every week you ensured that money came out faith was working every koinonia message on faith produced for you you forced it to work there was one one thousand every week here marked for maintaining this process but now that it has happened you have suddenly gassed out that energy is not there one day the lady just tries and said ah, ah, about that chicken have you eaten mr big chicken for a while Say, oh, please don't we're trying to conserve resources right here as if you didn't know it before so the the issue of emotional obsession listen this is why many relationships this is why western people cannot stay three days or one week are you following me now as quickly as they enter they pack their loads and go the reason is because the only factor was emotional obsession so the guy entered and you saw this posh guy eh? he was he was a lamborghini that dropped him ladies don't pretend like what i'm saying is not making sense the guy just comes out and now you are just looking what they call it tall dark and handsome very nice guy and now you are looking pinching your friend immediately the guy says can you come for before he finishes he say oh, my pleasure two weeks later i hate this guy guys are wicked i hate them calm down this night we are going to explain what is really wrong what's the problem everybody say emotional obsession emotional obsession is good but there is a level if you allow that to govern your relationship or to show whether your relationship is working or not you're going to get into trouble ask any married man a time comes where what is fueling them is commitment it's, it's not just emotional obsession i saw my father annoy my mother in a way that i knew if he was my mother that would be it i will call a pastor and say we need your attention in this family yet my mother will go and cook the the, the insult has not finished oh. the whole bag bag is still on and she'll be serving him when she finishes she'll sit down to continue the argument ah that 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 cannot be obsession hallelujah what's your son name ah give us an english name okay elijah let's assume you are mr elijah now you finish cheering yourself cheering yourself cheering yourself and people see her and say ah mrs elijah say how are you how is your husband fine yet you have not finished so you are going back let me tell you something brothers and sisters many people especially unbelievers have based their relationship on that tingly feeling that feeling of obsession he's the only person in your world she's the only person in your world hallelujah you have exams tomorrow by three you are still together the exam is by eight you know you will pass the lady says please i care about you it's academics what eh? I, I, I can make it i've been making it in this school i've been making it don't spoil this atmosphere right I, I, it will work just don't worry god is faithful it's like fire you can't help it you can't explain it hallelujah and then for many people when they get into the relationship or they get married after a while there are many names that the guy used to call you he found greek and hebrew names just for you shining star 
What again? What are the names? Ladies, tell me the names the guys call you. Oh yeah. What? Princess? Every lady's name is princess and angel. They like it. My name is angel. My name is princess. So the guys call all of those names. They are they are ways of trying to manage that fire at the moment. The time you just call and say, Ella, it's time for fellowship. Oh, let's go. She said, ah, what is wrong? Say, please, is he your name or not your name? Did your father give you the name? And now Ella is beginning to be worried. Is it that this guy doesn't love me again? Hallelujah. Please, are you following me now? Emotional obsession is good, but relationship cannot be sustained just from the emotional realm. Are you listening to me? Many people believe you get your relationship by that tingly feeling, and you feel the more I keep feeling so obsessed. That's what happens to white men. Two weeks after their relationship, they find out that that fire, that fervency is not there. And they just say, we are not meant for each other. Now they go to look for another person. So, they are allowing that obsession. And this is the problem that some of you have. You are, you are allowing your emotional obsession to be the governing factor. It's like a thermometer that helps you to know whether your relationship or your marriage is working or not. If that's what you are using, Satan will deceive you big time. Are you listening to me? So, have you understood emotional obsession now? Commitment. Everybody write. Commitment. Okay, leave yourselves again. Look up. This is a very dangerous word. Commitment. Everybody say commitment. Commitment is not a very nice word if you understand all that it entails. Let me tell you the truth. Commitment. Many people run away from this word called commitment. Hallelujah. There are many guys today and many ladies today who the reason why they are not in relationships is because they are afraid of commitment. You know what commitment is? Commitment entails sacrifice. Many guys and ladies alike are not willing to pay that sacrifice of commitment. Don't let anybody fool you. Genuine relationship takes sacrifice. You will forgo a lot of things. Some relationships and marriages will even change you. It will change you. Ask our mothers and they will tell you. Any woman who is married here will agree with me. It will change you. I remember years ago, two of our, our members got married and one time we went for somebody else's wedding and the lady who got married is a very playful lady. She likes jumping. She can jump up and down and play. Hallelujah. Now she was married and then she saw some of our other sisters who were not married. They were jumping and playing and you could see it pushing her. I mean, she wanted to join. I saw the way it was eating her up, but no way. There was a ring in her hand that was telling her, behave. Behave. Everybody say, commitment entails sacrifice. Many people do not want to pay that sacrifice to maintain your relationship, to maintain your marriage. It's what is very difficult for many people. Commitment entails contentment. Everybody say contentment. That's the reason why a man can marry. A woman can marry. There are men and women today who do not know what they want. Ten years after marriage, they are still looking around and changing. They lack contentment. Everybody say contentment. You know what contentment is? Contentment is getting to a point where you derive fulfillment and satisfaction. A Lamborghini is good. A Porsche Sain is good. Hallelujah. What other car again? Tell me one more. Don't mention anything you are not sure of. A Bentley is good. 
But you see, you can have your CRV and be contented. Are you listening to me? Contentment is very important. The Bible says, Proverbs 31, 31, it says, Many daughters have done excellently, but thou excellest them all. Many people like contentment. They lack it in life. That's why nothing can be enough. There are people in life you can never please. They, they always want more. They are never satisfied. Hallelujah. This is the problem with many relationships. There are many relationships that are not contented. And let me tell you something. If you find yourself talking to the guy or the lady, many people like comparing relationships. It's a terrible thing. Never do that. Hold our hands again. Two of you are going out. Say, Elijah, you used to wear nice suits before. Why is this one that you are looking like? You have been embarrassing me, oh. It has been paining me today. I'm saying it. Hallelujah. And then suddenly, who is with suit again? Sam, stand up. Now, she's already been dissatisfied with Elijah. Why? Because he didn't used to wear the suit she used to know him to wear before. Do you know that if you do not have contentment, little things can take away your passion? Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Suddenly, Sam is coming with his suit. Elijah, you're in trouble. Oh, there's fire on the mountain. Elijah doesn't know. Elijah doesn't know why her commitment is not. She's already seen Sam. See Sam's shirt. Two colors. In her heart, she has met Sam already. Oh. Elijah is there smiling. This is how many people are. Listen, listen, listen. This is very important. In life, can I tell you something? Brothers, get it straight. Even if you get the best lady you believe right now, you will see somebody better than her one day. By every standard, true or false. Sisters, you will see Prince Charming in Koinonia. And may God help you go somewhere. Hey, you will see Prince Charming plus. You will see another Prince Charming that will make you not to sleep many of us have this craving that cannot say enough not just for relationship you have a car you have your small golf you are starting small the day you see somebody's bends it's as if you should squeeze your golf and just throw it away they say whose car is this they say uh, please what is your business can't you see things and leave it to come and say this is my golf i bought it it's a fruit of hard work 500,000 with faith on top is what brought me this golf. One day I would, I would turn this golf into a, a Bentley. But for now, this is golf. This is what many of us, many of us, many of us, you are in a relationship. God bless you, Sam. The lady cannot speak English very well. You too, you came from the village. So it was not a big deal. You just connected suddenly you found out that your cgpa was doing well and you had a brother who stayed in uk as your roommate and eventually metamorphosis orientation your 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 village english is being changed and polished and now you can speak queen's english you you can speak all the oral english and everything hallelujah suddenly you start looking at the lady and in your mind you are like ah god I don't know how to manage this thing now. Our levels have changed. So. Hallelujah. Now you don't know how to tell this sister. Say, Tor, we came from the same village. Yes. As at the time I met you, two of us were managing in the same realm. But maybe you gave me scholarship. I went to UK for three months or for PhD or this. And now I'm back from UK. So I can't relate with you again nonsense hallelujah I was told that what was the name of that Nigerian lady who got Miss Walt the guy who was going out with her the moment 
she qualified for international this thing. The guy just left. He just knew that there's, there's no point wasting time. This is how many of us are. You lack contentment. You can never say enough. You just turn and you see another lady with nice Yvonne. Sister, please stand up. You. Uh huh. See her beautiful Yvonne. And you just look. Suddenly you look at her like, say, you, you don't do Yvonne. Eh? Yeah? It's dangerous. Because many people think marriage will solve that problem. I assure you it won't solve it. That's why you can see a man in a car when he's with maybe his daughter's friend. He's smiling. How are you? Where is your father? But when he's with his wife, you will know. What of the, the fuel? Did they bring it? He's driving, you know. She's saying, yes. She's turning her face. Commitment. Everybody say commitment. Number three, commitment entails patience. Patience. One of the greatest shocker for people in relationship is that when they enter, they suddenly find out that all you saw in the guy or the lady is not all there is. It's a root shock. Hallelujah. Commitment entails tolerance. Many of you are not tolerant at all. Look up, please. Now, let me say something. Many people enter relationship with their idea of what it should look like. Hallelujah. Some of you have been so battered by the complex you grew up with that your relationship is a revenge mission. You didn't tell the guy, but you have been so psychologically whipped that you have sworn to yourself that this guy is that donkey that Jesus used to ride. He said, brother, are you willing? You kept asking the guy, do you truly love me? The guy didn't understand. He said, yes. You truly love Yes. The brother didn't wait. He said, okay, well, let's do. After one month, nobody tells the brother, the guy is dying. His pocket money has finished. Savings finished. He has sold his laptop. He sold his Blackberry. His other shoe, he has sold it. In your mind, you are saying, you've not seen anything, no? You better keep selling. I went through a lot of pain. We didn't eat meat in our house. I'm revenging. So, you better... There are many ladies that your concept of relationship is a revenge. All the things you've gone through, all the names they called you, you will ride on that brother until he knows that he asks you out. And you believe that your beauty is a consolation for all this pain. One day like a donkey, the brother will just die. The brother will say, this thing I'm not doing again. Hallelujah. It gets bad when your family joins in the ride. The mother says, let's ride. Oh. You said the guy is purpose driven. Oh yeah. Ask him to send some money. You have not married the girl. Yet they said there's one contribution they are doing somewhere. Ah. The brother is saying, do they know me? He says, shall I bring it? How much? 15,000, 5,000 my own transport. The guy now goes to ask Pastor Jakes and say, if somebody is in a relationship, and the family is already asking him to bring money. Is he right? There are many people. Listen, listen, please. That's why it's good to think well, though. It's good to think well. There are some families that are suffering. They are crying for a savior. If you are coming to be that savior, hear God first. Hear God first. There are families that things are not working well. I tell you, things are not working well. They need a man to help them. You, you just came. I'm that man. The mother looked at you the day you came. Can you carry it? Before they finish, say yes. You carry it. Now you are dying. The load is killing you. You know, we counsel people. So we know the things that we hear. Hallelujah. Ladies, 
relationship is not a revenge mission please don't say i've been feeling calm I've, I've suffered inferiority complex now this guy the guy wants to spend 10 minutes with god you're already angry the bible says whatever god has joined what is all that must he go with you you came late for a program he's sitting in front you are frowning why didn't he sit with me ah, ah. this is insecurity hallelujah and many of you do not know there are there are there are there are people who when they are in a relationship like this especially certain guys suddenly when you see ella just whisper something to jakes you are not talking to her again no? what did you tell jakes what did you tell him that you couldn't tell me and the lady said no 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 look at your bible says the bible saw the what i've been watching you that's how you told this guy the other day you said this and that and that and then same with ladies a sister comes to ask somebody who has been helping her before you even came and now the brother just calls her corners her gives her one thousand the lady she will do as if oh ladies can see they will pretend they didn't see it even if they didn't see it, their friends oh yeah i see immediately you see they'll turn it's during their regular regular what meeting the issue will come up say in this relationship we are not honest with one another the brother will say really say we are not honest god knows there's no honesty in this thing when people are giving people money how can there be honesty who are the people who are the other people they gave we don't know say me i won't talk again i don't want trouble you have already spoken the trouble is there already hallelujah commitment entails responsibility listen look at me there are many people that love koinonia you love koinonia but the moment they say um why don't you join a department once you hear anything that will commit you you are finding your way there is a beautiful dinner coming up next week you are smiling the price is aha uh -huh, commitment anything there are people who especially guys brother if you are still afraid of commitment don't ever if you are seeing any lady in your dream stop it stop it stop seeing her because you are only playing there are many brothers here they, they are not committed have you seen people like that there's nothing that is worth their time and their attention they want to be average in everything small here small here so long as it doesn't commit me hallelujah you say i'm in prayer department boy say what what kind of members are in prayer department I, yeah, me i'll just be coming when i want to i hope you are not offended why wouldn't you be committed everybody wants things that you say i'm in welfare but the thing is that the nature of my life is that there are times when i may not be around let me tell you there is nothing good that happens in life without commitment is that correct you are seeing the worship people standing this is commitment it's not like they don't know how to sit many of you you run away from anything that will bring responsibility hallelujah you are in a relationship with the lady one day she just says sorry yo please don't think i'm materialistic i've not spoken with my mother for a while can you help me with five aha uh -huh. aha uh -huh. she has not mentioned aha uh -huh. see you joshua selman said people should not be disturbing us you are the kind of abba 500 naira for the charge card greedy and stingy people hate commitment because it will require them to give out something greedy people that's why they don't have many friends they don't like anything don't come and say we're having a get together everybody bring money uh -uh. or bring as the spirit leads they don't like that kind of thing 
commitment. Listen. Every marriage I know of that has worked did not just work because of emotions. Are you listening to me? We are going to be very practical today. Have you seen a man and his wife? A man who has accident, for instance, in the course of their marriage and he's now confided on wheelchair and the wife is still standing and they are celebrating their anniversary together and the wife is saying, if God gives us another life, I will marry you. My brother, my sister, this cannot be emotion. Are you understanding what I'm saying? It, it cannot be emotion. The day the guy fought with somebody, they blew his eyes. Suddenly you came and saw somebody with one dark eye. Your friend, he was coming, you just turn and tell your friends, ah, please, let me, I'm, I'm sorry, I have to run somewhere. You are a child, you, have no, you are not ready for marriage. Is this kind of secondary school thing people do? Hallelujah. Many of you feel embarrassed at just any little thing. Rain beats the guy, he just entered somewhere and he's smiling. They're like, ah, this guy is falling my hand. You better, you better stop it. He's taking you out. All the money he has is what can sponsor two of you. The remaining change is 100 or 200. I say, let's enter bus. And now while you are entering, you see other people in their relationship. The guy just turned, just does hunt for you. Out of a sincere heart to just say hello, the lady is just getting uncomfortable in the bus. Ah, sweet, I was wrong, please. You are already embarrassed. You want the guy to go and steal. So that he will make you happy. Many ladies have led our brothers into unbelievable things because they think they want to protect their image. That's why many ladies want guys that they can control. Some of you even say it proudly. You better repent this night. Did you hear what I said? Change! Repent. Say, I like a guy. My own guy. Everybody will sit down. Everybody is talking about their own. My own guy, yo. I can flash him now, now. And he will flash me back. If I tell him I'm not happy right now, it's 15 text messages I will get before I sleep. And if you dare me, I will do it. You are using the guy like a caricature and you are smiling. God is watching. God will pick him and give somebody who deserves him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I assure you. Stop it. Your relationship is not a revenge mission. Yes, we know you suffered growing up. Manage your, your, your predicaments. That's why you receive the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Everybody say, I receive grace to be committed. I receive grace to be committed. Because there are many of you, the kind of man or woman you are looking for has not yet been born. With the, the, the attitude you have, I assure you, the person has not been born. hallelujah you are not willing to sacrifice anything you are not willing to be patient you are not willing to build most of us want ready-made relationships ready-made unfortunately there's nothing called ready-made relationship you can look at her and like her you've not seen her when she's angry you've not seen her when she's broke You've not seen her when she's under pressure. You too, you have not seen him. He's wearing nice suits now. You don't know what happens when his CGA pierce nose diving. You don't know what he can become. That's why you need God. I hear what I'm saying. See, let me tell you something. This is why I personally believe that campus relationship is one of the best kinds of relationship. You know why? Because at that point, you see the brother when he wakes up you see his drowsy eyes there's nothing that is hidden he can't lie for long you've seen the shoe you followed him to the shoemaker to help and patch it so you know that this guy doesn't have much you were the one who helped him to bargain 
the, the 500 naira material you beg the tailor to sew it for him so your love is genuine because it's not tied to anything that's why many people many people who already become blessed and wealthy hardly make good marital decisions which lady will not want a guy who let me tell you something some people have, some ladies have suffered who we'll talk about it once you enter 300 level your mother calls you ella come here she come and sit here come now ella say ella what did we eat day before yesterday beans what did we eat yesterday beans what did we eat today i didn't have the opportunity to enjoy what you can enjoy what i'm trying to say is this a rich man is better than a poor man leave all those campus promising brothers look at nigeria no jobs what is the guarantee when do you want to marry say next year say find somebody that looks like next year don't find somebody that doesn't look like it's not like i'm telling you not to choose or i wouldn't choose for when they're already choosing for you hallelujah are you learning something this night so ella now comes and begins to scout one promising serious brother in decoration you are serving labor in the house of god but all you have is the promise of god no manifestation yet you just come to ella and say um ella i uh <laughs> they don't even think about it oh. i know where you are going let me help you get there you are wasting your time oh, because of what the mother has already told her so she's scouting around looking for this pushed military officer in in Jaji, or army officer or director in bank and every time she enters uba she's just smiling at the staff because you want to please your mother and then 10 years later you have not married and then you come and see that brother that you used to see his shoe when he's praying in koinonia because he doesn't want it to tear he will remove it and keep it but he's praying he's fasting later you see the guy drop from his car and look and say ah i know you now and you're like yes sir i know you too i know you i know you i know where i met yourself say sir have you married he said, ah this is my little junior come you are you are in for it this night oh brothers appreciate me if i'm helping you mm. hallelujah we're still talking about commitment many people run away from commitment many people we hate commitments in the house of god commitment to your friends commitment to your family commitment to your work say i receive grace to be committed hallelujah please celebrate them hallelujah emotional obsession is not enough i hope you've learned that now because there are some of you who are wondering this my relationship is in nose diving but then you will find out that this tingly emotional feeling is not all there is to relationship you will grow up and you will begin to take the burden of love the burden of responsibility hallelujah you take last your father will whip you yet you will go to the bank to withdraw school fees he will talk and say me may god punish me if i pay your school fees but before resumption he brings the receipt where are you come if you like go back to school yet he said may god punish me i said he even forgot the burden of love hallelujah very important so how many of you are learning something now the third thing i want you to know about maintaining relationships 
we spoke about emotional obsession that as good as it is it's not enough number two commitment we spoke about commitment your commitment must be beyond your emotions to sustain any marriage must be far beyond a determination number three communication and this is where we will dwell seriously today everybody say communication hallelujah how many of you have read the book five love languages let me see your hands how many of you have read any book on relationship and marriage aside from married people you see what we are saying look at me what you do not place value for you will not excel in. are you listening to me whatever you do not whatever you do not respect leaves you whatever you appreciate comes to you so i'll take an extra from five love languages when it comes to communication hallelujah please look up hold on gary chapman in his years of research about marriage and relationship why homes work and why homes do not work came up with what he called five love languages look up please now a love language talks of a a means of communication are you listening to me the way and manner to which people want love expressed to them so that they can feel its effect are you listening to me i can love you eh? are you following me i can love you but until you are convinced that means i must find ways of relating that love in a way that it relates to your realm is that correct are you following me and this is what gary chapman called love languages in his research he found out that many relationships were broken and many homes were broken because the couple or the spouses did not know how to communicate love to one another are you following me now and so he found out in his years and decades of counseling that honestly many couples that were fighting in homes actually loved themselves but what they lacked was the art of communicating the love are you following me now to one another in a way that they will interpret it as love now um come my dear i was looking for a lady with this kind of hair come Now, if I look at this lady, I only see and I look at her and I say, Ah, see your multicolored hair. Do you know I may say it as a means of expressing that I like it, correct? But she can receive it as an insult. Have I communicated love to her? But do I love her? Are you are you getting me now? So I come and say, see your multicolored hair. This is supposed in my own thinking. This is a beautiful compliment when i expected a hug where's your hand what is a slap if you don't like the hair tell me to change it don't insult me like that bless you five love languages number one he found out that now all of these love languages are applicable to everybody but there is what we call the primary love language the primary love language is the best and most effective means that an individual interprets receives the feeling of love are you following me now number one words of affirmation whether you've read the book write it gary chapman found out that there were many men that what they wanted was words or men and women words of affirmation i will explain them very quickly number two acts of service acts of service from the acts of the apostles acts of service media if you can help us words of affirmation 
that's number one love language number two acts of service number three receiving gifts receiving gifts am i too fast number four quality time quality time and number five physical touch start it start that one start it and follow me number one words of affirmation number two acts of service number three receiving gifts number four what quality time five physical touch look up please gary chapman in his in his in his research found out that almost every human being had one of these as his primary or her primary love language what is word a uh, word of affirmation this is mostly strong for men look up please for many men words of affirmation is their primary love language two people again oh yeah now you and somebody sweetheart come don't be afraid don't worry bless you stand here you stand here words of affirmation listen men are visionary men are purpose driven are you listening to me so words of i'm sorry words of affirmation is that assuming this is a husband and a wife and she's telling him she's saying look sweetheart i know that our finances is not in the best position right now but do you know that the man that i met is more visionary than the man that i'm seeing now this guy is broke you are suffering there's no food at home but now he's depressed words of affirmation you are telling him look like you always used to tell us we are coming out of this do you still believe it i believe in you remember when you said god told you that this ministry will blossom the guy just nods what are you doing you are speaking his primary language of love you are affirming are you following me now it's an affirmation you are letting him know that i believe in you and i'm not letting circumstances dictate it food may not be in the house but i'm ready to stand by you words of affirmation and suddenly this guy looks and he says look even if we come back in another planet you is you that i'll marry again that's why you see some guys go through hell and high water as soon as they come out they marry the girl that was there for them straight even if she was a villager because as far as they are concerned that was the person who was able to speak their love language hallelujah rain wash jordan bookstore for instance and everybody is just sending texts oh god jordan god help you and then one sister comes and says jordan how can i help look something like this happened to my brother and so i can understand ha! jordan won't sleep jordan won't sleep jordan will just smile i didn't know you will answer me this way i didn't know you will answer me this way she just spoke his love language everybody say words of affirmation very few ladies have words of affirmation as their primary love language but they do number two acts of service there are many people that are obsessed about receiving a helping hand especially ladies hallelujah so this lady is is, is walking in the kitchen eh? put your hands here you are walking in the kitchen you are washing plates now you put the other hand you wash plates with one hand that's right now she's she's washing plates and then this guy how many of you know this kind of big cd in our house that you just touch something and then your father is just listening to his reggae remembering his days and the mother is just sweating and angry in the kitchen first she starts singing hymns the song is playing loud but she's singing 
What a friend we have in Jesus. She's angry. Your father doesn't know. Because her primary love language may be acts of service. Martha in the Bible had her primary love language as the act of service. That's why she was angry when Mary left her just walking and at a point she couldn't hide it. She came to Jesus and Jesus said, Martha, Martha, Jesus wasn't the thing. He said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and obsessed about many things. There are people who are obsessed about receiving a helping hand. I've seen people like that, guys and ladies. So now you come and meet her and you say, um, can I help you? Can I help you wash the plate? She says, no. Honestly, she will tell you no. But her satisfaction is that you were able to speak her love language. That you came to show her a helping hand. Are you following me now? Very important. A lady can be holding a book. You say, let me help you. She will still give you the book. You'll be wondering now, wow, what kind of arrogant lady? She may not be arrogant. It's her primary love language. Are you following me now? That's why there can be a beehive of guys around her. But it's the person who can speak her love language. The race is not to the swift, though. The battle is not to the strong. Somebody is buying Mr. Biggs. Buy Mr. Biggs. She will carry the Mr. Biggs and be sharing it with the brother that is doing acts of service for her. You say, somebody was generous to me. One brother brought Mr. Biggs. Can we eat together? We've been working together. She got a room off K. The guy came to help her. Humble, they were sweeping together. Ah, ah. Later, she will stop and be looking. Ah, she's seen her husband. The other guy is just sending Mr. Biggs. She will call that guy and say, Kai, I was sweeping my room today. The guy will say, Really? That means you're hungry. He say, eh, Well, it not immediately it comes. They will share it with her real husband. That's why some of you guys have been suffering because you don't know the road to the city. Number three, receiving gifts. Now look up, please. This is very important. There are many people who are obsessed about receiving gifts. Especially ladies. It's not materialism. It's their love language. Hallelujah. How many of you have seen ladies every time you are traveling say, what will you get for me? I tell you that's a big sign that receiving gifts is their love, is their primary love language. And truly you would think they are playing. You will carry your big mouth and say, I will buy chicken. I will. You think they will forget. When you come, they are looking at many things. They are just looking at what looks like chicken around your hand. You didn't bring it. You find out that they are suddenly edgy. They are angry. They are not cooperating. What happened? Hallelujah. They love it. They love gifts. It's not about the cost. Even if it's one sweet. You just say, guess what? What's your name? Regina, beautiful name. Regina, I just bought one eckless, eckless, or Tom Tom, Tom Tom self. She doesn't have Qatar. But she say, really? Ha, Kai, that was so touching. Five Naira. Five Naira. But that's her love language. That's the guy's love language. There are guys like that. There are men of God like that. Their love language is you must come with something. If not, the anointing will not be stirred up. must receive something number four let's run quality time aha quality time hold on now husband and wife now quality time is so important hallelujah businessmen pilots soldiers oil company workers pastors listen accountants students time and this is not just ladies there are guys that want time like ladies so there are people this is their primary love language now this guy is offshore two weeks two weeks is drilling oil for nigeria you are drilling oil you are drilling oil this lady is there 
once they spend one day they don't see you that time their body starts they are obsessed about time there are ladies like that the guy says um i'll come and see you in two hours even if it's accident that happened and he got even if it's accident he's bringing the trouser that tore say see i brought this to explain you see i, I changed trouser she said I'm, I'm not hearing anything no you're on your own because the way you have been behaving this relationship tear the guy up and down the guy has to prepare a special atmosphere that will repay what would have happened and now says I just wanted you to know that I'm at the dam now. I'm waiting for you. Say, eh, which part of the dam? Aha. Attention. Time. With who? No, I'm alone. I'm alone. Alone and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Say, me, I want to sleep now. And the guy will say, Haba, I did all this for you. So, yeah, I'm coming. She will drop it and start smiling. Start doing all her foundation. Put everything. Do everything. You're on your way running and then when you get there you are happy because he's speaking your love language physical touch i said you should start it oh the reason is because please look up and i must say this we're christians the emotional nature please listen i say this all the time i know there are some of you who just frown and say please jerry all these people you are trying to Many of these books you read. You see, in America, a guy can go out with this lady and be having a French kiss with her. Christians, they love God in the presence of her parents. And they'll be happy. Oh dear. They'll be remembering their own. But the problem is because of the... Please listen. This is important. The context of our culture. Are you listening to me? And the effect because we are emotional beings by the time there are many ladies that are obsessed and guys too their primary love language is touch now when i talk of touch i'm not talking of immorality they are not bad honestly they are not corrupt are you following me now they like hugging this is a hugging generation there are times that we are counseling ladies and as soon as they come you see bishop do it sometimes here or jakes when they come they are trying to fight their tears and what happens the love language of a touch if your mind is not if your mind has a problem with it please just come for counseling because the bible says to the pure all things are pure there are some of you that anything in your mind say how can a guy stand here please i beg please let's let's learn first hallelujah are you listening to me very important now of course i'm not saying in a relationship you have to say see you minimum distance this is how we are no but but listen you must be careful look up please are you learning are we christians here yeah? are we christians please everything we are saying is within the jurisdiction of the kingdom i don't know what you have learned from nigerian films but we are christians this is a lady you are physically attracted to is that true please answer me is that true now ah, see we are human beings so you are a man no you are a woman no be careful hallelujah by the time you start doing some funny things like saying okay you want to love this lady even if a bible is in front of two of you and you are doing bible study there's trouble it may not happen that day but be sure you're on the way to destruction i know what i'm saying will offend some of you it doesn't make sense but let me tell you help yourself praise god what did i say help yourself so try to minimize 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 the love language of touch when you are married back your wife and go out with her that's your back her Go out with her. That's your cup of tea. Let everybody know that two of you, your love language is touch. At least you are married. But that you are single. And then some things, you and the person may know you are pure. But you see the report before men. 
especially if you are a leader are you listening? are you following me very important there are some things you do they may not be wrong in themselves but the effect the message it can pass to other people is what is very dangerous and you must have that staying power to help yourself hallelujah are you getting blessed so if your love language is the touch please receive grace from god and understand that it will be minimized until marriage hallelujah when you get married against such there's no law sleep with yourself from morning till night back back you that's your cup of tea do whatever you want to do but for now that you are not married help yourself so that you will marry willingly happily and honorably hallelujah so that they won't force you and say okay you have demonstrated to us your willingness to marry in two weeks therefore prepare and do everything please avoid such kind of things because it will make you to hate the person that you are supposed to spend the rest of your life with is somebody hearing this so if you have been in a relationship or if you are married that's okay you are exempted from all this but if you are in a relationship there are some of you that do funny things you just stand i i saw one guy around social center and he was i can't even begin to describe what i saw around that place where they park and i know that lady i'm sure she's a christian lady kai he was too extreme eh whether your love language whatever your love is too extreme please christians are we together you're angry abby i will say it i'm not going to stop it it's too much you are doing as if they will steal the woman be careful if you can't whatever is pursuing you go and meet her parents it's too much some things believers do around i know some of you will not be it's too bad guys come to ladies hostel or come out is is too is too intimate it's too expressive see you may not go to hell but you are certainly not going to live a fruitful life because that thing is leading you into trouble i'm telling you this take what i'm saying very seriously do you know when your touch for a lady becomes excessive she starts fading and getting cheap before you are you listening to me there is no no expectancy again ladies there are some of you anybody can touch you anywhere anyhow anytime you don't mind you are just smiling sheepishly guys will keep changing you and you are just around social center you are around anywhere you just run 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 climb the guy's back and you are laughing he will drop you the other one will carry you what kind of wife do you want to become open your eyes open your ears then you'll understand that the lord is here open your eyes would you open your ears and then you'll understand that the lord that you just enter a relationship before you know it you are ah, come on, no. and brothers there are some of you that are shameless may god grant you grace to be disciplined in jesus name say amen some of you behave as if you are not christians you are not the first to enter a relationship you will not be the last people have held themselves for years or oh god what is pursuing you behave yourself you are just around the lady as if you are as if he's a fly and anybody I don't know what do you want Abba. and there are ladies look at me sisters i'm talking to you now because there are many guys here that got into certain things because of the pressure that the ladies mount many ladies your love language is physical touch be careful what did i say what did i say oh 
manage yourself i know that biologically speaking there are many biological and psychological reasons as to why ladies will want touch as their primary love language but let me tell you this is why the spirit of god comes are you hearing me you are not an unbeliever you are a christian it is because of physical touch that many people have gotten into pornography hear me please masturbation homosexualism are you following me now lesbianism i will say it all internet pornography and you have done many unthinkable things because of the vulnerability of the human body to the touch this is why you must be careful i'm warning you now be careful i'm speaking to you see my heart and see the love i'm a human being too but i'm telling you be careful so that you will get married happily and honorably praise the lord is that possible is that possible for a christian yes how do you make that possible discuss it see when you enter a relationship the boundaries you don't discuss you will cross discuss it tell him oh, me honestly the way i am see i once counseled a lady years ago listen i found out that this lady was so obsessed about physical touch and i knew she was a christian and she loved god and it was it was getting to, ah it was too much she can want to hug you and fly on you you know how superman does as in fly on mercilessly as in this kind loosely and carelessly you know that this one has crossed the boundary by far and i found out that ah, what is there must be something wrong and then i got to find out that she had a medical condition of hormonal imbalance are you following me now this was what was response she did it she had an unusual craving for touch and we had to put this lady under careful surveillance so that we gather against wolves in sheep's <laughs> clothing because there are some let me tell you the church has all kinds of brothers so sometimes that's why you see us guard our sister sometimes when we see you coming around and you have been too careless we'll tell you behave please we are watching behave behave hallelujah bless you bless you sir everybody said five love languages how do you know your partner's love language by their consistent complaints right their consistent complaint is a sign that you are not responding to their love language you said every time you travel you don't used to think about me every time you travel that's how you leave me alone even a flash aha quality time she's speaking her love language to you if you are smart get it note it and start responding hallelujah praise god very important look at me when you see a lady start talking about can we go to church together can we sit together can we they say high five your neighbor she's looking at you and hoping you look at her back you high five somebody else you will explain it sooner or later she won't forget it that's that's touch there are you following me or a lady that informs you the day you give her this thing she informs you about the date of her next birthday right away so that you start preparing ah, that's that's receiving gifts there brothers have you been sensitive ladies have you been sensitive you see this guy walking all the time he tells you i have a building project i've been trying to build you just land and look at him and say you didn't even see my wevon what of words of affirmation why don't you speak his love language that's why you can see a guy will look at the girl and say you're a selfish lady or a guy will look at a visionary brother and say you are very selfish the guy's hand is like this aha receiving gifts this is not quality time if you see ladies and this guy his hand is like this like his big head his hand is like that receiving gifts hallelujah 
Let me give you an assignment. Do it in one minute right now. Everybody, write your love language. Find it. You know it. Some of you are laughing. Some of you say all. It's a lie. It's a lie. No matter what health issue you have, you have only one love language. Don't say, yeah, me to the doctor said, no, you have one. Please find it. So that you know it. If you are in a relationship, this is the week of discussion. If you are married, discuss this with your spouse. Say, I didn't know that this trouble I've been making in this house is as a result of absence of meeting my love language. I'll give you the love language again. Number one, words of affirmation. Number two, acts of service. Number three, receiving gifts. Number four, quality time. Number five, physical touch. Be honest between you and God. Write it. Don't show anybody. It's none of your neighbor's business. Just write it. Write it and know it. Know it now. So that you stop punishing the brother. There are many of you that are always complaining. The guy has done everything he knows to do. You are saying he doesn't love you. He doesn't know what to do again. Please tell him what your love language is. It will help him to relate with you. Is someone learning something here? Maintaining relationships. Many homes are broken down because they do not know this. Look at me. I once counseled a, well, a young pastor, not, not really a young pastor. And of course, I'm not mentioning names of ministries and all of that, but I don't know what it was. This guy just got married and it was very funny because it looked like all about their lives was ministry. This guy can travel and not see the lady for months. And I knew where he learned that from. The lady was angry. Hallelujah. But she didn't know how. Some ladies will not talk. But he's eating them. Are you listening to me? And that situation, when I, the guy was troubled. And then I said, okay, let me, can I talk with the lady? I talked with her on phone. This lady started crying and say she doesn't even trust the guy again she doesn't even know if the guy is sleeping around i just knew that her love language is quality time and this guy has not spent time with her brothers let me shock you if you don't spend time with a particular lady one day you will come and find your files and everything outside and she has already married another man they've given birth to children you don't know businessmen beware bishop gave us a story of of one man somewhere this guy was a billionaire. He was obsessed about making money. And he will not spend time with his wife. We'll talk about maintaining marriages now. That's where we'll talk of sex, marriage, emotion, spending time, God, and all of this. When, when, when you are not married, we don't have anything to say about sex. If you have been waiting for me to talk about sex, you are wasting your time. Till we start talking about marriage marriage with a ring marriage with a ring praise god say amen if you are getting blessed if this thing is offending you it's a sign that you may need to adjust some things don't get angry are you hearing what i'm saying because honestly many of us are too loose we have allowed a lot of things there are many Christian relationships that they sleep with one another. They are happy. They don't think it's an issue. The brother showed the sister a nice scripture in the Bible. First Corinthians. Twisted the girl's head. I'm telling you now, get it straight. Sex is only, only, only for married people. I don't care what the Western world says. When we talk about marriage here, I'm going to tell you the spiritual implication of sex. We'll talk about it. You know us here, we don't have time for any story story. We don't teach, we're not teaching you biology. We're teaching you something that will help you in life. And so we'll say it as it is. Many of you think sex is just all about pleasure and emotional satisfaction. When I show you the spiritual side of sex, you will run away from any man who wants to sleep with you who is not your husband. Are you listening to me? God threatened me with that revelation. Threatened. When I had the revelation, I just said, ah, myself behave. 
Joshua Selman behave. In Jesus' name. Okay. Are you learning something right now? Could this be the reason why many of you have entered over 10 relationships and they didn't work? You are blaming any everybody. Could it be that you are the problem now? Are you now seeing? 10 people cannot be wrong. Could it be that the problem is you? Before I round up, we are going to talk about what I call the love and respect principle. Still talking about communication. The love and respect people principle now dr emerson please write it and look up we finish with gary chapman dr emerson wrote something about love and respect and he called it the crazy circle everybody say the crazy circle say one more time the crazy circle for the last time please let me have two people again at least ella come again and who when ella came out who came out oh yeah now oh, god you are doing as if come and stand to me Ella and him. You are married or you are going out. Hold your hands. Praise God. What is the crazy circle? This was the example he gave. Listen. Please listen. They are celebrating their 10 years anniversary. Correct? And this guy is busy. So he looks at, you know this kind of card that you, don't, you really don't see what they just write. Maybe something sweet. And you know we men, we, are, we can, sometimes we, we are not thorough. You just see the card. Ah, I like it. So he bought the card. He has been forgetting all the wedding anniversaries. And she's hoping he will remember the 10th one. Are you getting my example? So now the guy comes and gives her a surprise. Hold it. Honey, I bought you this card. Now Ella is smiling, smile now. Don't, don't worry. Now she's smiling. Finally. She's interpreting this care and attention as what? Love. Is that correct? Then she opens the card only to find out that the guy bought a birthday card mistakenly. Please listen to my story. What did he buy? During an anniversary. Suddenly she looks at it. Bam! She drops it down and says, It was better! You didn't buy the card. What is she doing? Listen. She has been compromised. He, he has failed to interpret love. So she feels the only way to know him make it to, to make him know it is by being negative and hurting him. Are you following me now? Now the guy is angry because he interprets what she has done as disrespect. Are you following me now? And he's saying. Can you not even appreciate the fact how many men can remember to buy an anniversary card? I bought you an anniversary card. If you talk to me like this again, I will slap you. Why? Now, he too is revenging. Dr. Emerson calls it the crazy cycle. Where a woman responds negatively to communicate her heart. And the man responds negatively too. Fire for fire ends two of you in ashes. Correct? This is the crazy cycle. Do you understand? I told you that ladies desire love, care, attention. Men desire what? Respect. Everybody say respect and honor. So, what the love and respect principle is the principle of communication in relationship and marriage that teaches you how to look beyond the acts of your spouse and see their heart. Are you following me now? Then you will be able to understand the craving that led to that activity that was done. Whether it was done well or not. Are you following me now? So let's, let's do it again. Now he gives her this. And then she collects it and opens and it's a birthday gift. And she's like, wow honey, I, I want to appreciate you. And she laughs and jokingly says, Ogasa, do you know you bought me a birthday gift? Say, Tom, but at least you tried. If you remember this, this year, next year you'll be meticulous. Now what happens? She's sad. But she found out that dishonoring him will complicate the issue. Are you following me now? So in that honor, the guy now feels bad because she has honored him. And he will now say, do you know what? 
we are going out this night. Even the devil will not stop us. I must make this up because she has honored him. Are you following me? We call it the love and respect principle. There are some ladies whose marriages and relationship will never work until they learn this. Look up. Ladies, look up. No matter what enters you, don't ever get so wild and angry that you start insulting a guy and washing him down and giving it to him. Ladies call it giving it to him. You give it to him. See, I washed him from head and washed. I gave it to him. He knew that. I've been watching him. You are laughing. Let me tell you something. No matter how beautiful you are, your beauty will fade like a leaf. The guy will hate you forever. Are you, are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Don't try to embarrass a guy. You went to Suya joint. Ogagam boy is here. You are going to buy Suya. And of course, the guy wants to behave. So he will say, um, you know, Ella, just speak for us. A wise lady will honor him back. You don't want to disgrace him. You know, based on your relationship, you can be free to say some things. Even if he's joking, how much oil should I pick? Oh, not you just start laughing and say, hey, hey. Ogaga, how much? 50 naira, how much? 100 naira, how much? 200. You say, put five of this one. And all the guy has is 500. Now, this guy is sweating. He doesn't know what to do. He's looking around if you see any of his friends. You say, do you mind, mommy? I, I eat three. Three will be okay for me. How about you? You say, Ogaga, but just put two more. The guy is fidgeting. So his response is, he's just saying, put more. He already knows that this thing is a mess. There's no honor there. Hallelujah. And at the end, the guy suddenly looks at you and says, look, sweetheart, let me just tell you, I came with only 500. Why didn't you tell me? What kind of thing is this? When you are not ready, don't say, did I ask you for it? Did I ask you for it? Please, in fact, I'm even going. The friend will say, no, no, come. And that's how you, you go to the hostel. Let me tell you something. You broke the love and respect principle. You embarrassed the guy there. Washed him there. You were happy. You entered your room boiling. And your roommates had to tell you, calm down. Can you imagine? And you are saying he embarrassed you. You didn't look at his sincere efforts. Are you following me now? Listen. God is speaking to some of you here. You need to change it. You have been breaking the love, respect circle. And there are some of you brothers. You must be careful. Hallelujah. I've said it here. Don't put too much culture inside your relationship. Hallelujah. The lady just comes and says, Hi, how are you? Elijah. And you're like, ah, Ella. See, look at me. I'm from a royal family, one. Number two, I'm older than you. Something that is supposed to be obvious. Even my sisters kneel down to greet me. See, don't, don't think just because I asked you out to you within all these things. Let me tell you, I can leave this relationship and I will sleep fine. This nonsense the brother is saying now is called breaking the, the, the love respect circle. Are you hearing me? Don't do that. So, when there is love from this side, there is what? The Bible says, Proverbs 24, we're rounding up. Proverbs 24, verse 3. Let's look at it quickly. Proverbs 24, verse 3. From Amplified. Is it possible to get it Amplified? Amplified. Please project it. I want you to read it. We're going to pray. The devil is a liar in Jesus' name. That devil that wants to destroy relationships and marriage, we will cast it out this night in the name of Jesus. Everybody say, my marriage must work. Say it, it must work in Jesus' name. All right, everybody, let's read. One, two, read. Through skillful and godly wisdom is a house, a life, a home, a family built. And by understanding, it is established upon a sound and good foundation. He said, through skillful and godly wisdom is what? So if you understand the principles, God is speaking. There are some of you that God stopped from entering relationships so that you can understand this. Hallelujah. 
the greatest craving for a lady is the craving to be loved brothers say it after me the greatest craving for a lady is to be loved to be cared for to be protected ladies say after me the greatest desire for a man is to be respected to be honored now just stop playing one minute in what way have you been dishonoring the men around you ladies this is a time for soul searching or rounding up in what way in what way i stop the keyboard playing so that you will listen carefully there are many of us that you need to change your attitude are you following me now you need to what change your attitude i want all the ladies in koinonia to treat the brothers with respect and dignity it doesn't matter if the guy is older than you or you are older than the person treat them well are you listening to me what did i say treat them well don't treat the brothers like rags if you've been doing it stop it because do not be deceived god cannot be mocked whatsoever a man soweth that he will reap one day they will treat you like rags treat the brothers with respect when you see them greet them be smart don't think it is weakness many of you have been taught you think it's being cheap you are being virtuous are you following me you are not being cheap for god's sake you are being virtuous brothers let me never see you shouting insulting embarrassing boiling at any lady you are struggling for seat with her he said all i know is that me except you cut these two legs you can do all your thing you know? i must sit out here and the lady is looking very helpless you are bullying her hallelujah brothers you should protect our sisters for us I've said it here. Brothers, behold your wives. Sisters, behold your husbands. It's not a lie. Huh? It's not a lie. It will happen. It's happening. It will keep happening. So treat them well. The person you may be treating with this day now may be your husband. True, true. Treat them well. Hallelujah. Don't gauge people and say, Kai, the way this brother is dressed himself now, wow. You don't merit my respect. When you look at the brothers, you look at them, say, mm, this guy babs well, he's nice, he's not pouring saliva at me anyhow, I will respect him. But the brother that is coming, praise and worship, you are just shouting and pouring saliva at me, say, brother, now, wow, about me, kilo shelle, what is wrong? Are you the only one in Koinonia? Are you the only one who can call upon the name of the Lord? Ladies, lift your hands. Say in the name of Jesus, I'm a virtuous woman. In the name of Jesus, I honor my husband. I respect my husband. In the name of Jesus. And say one more time, in the name of Jesus, I honor all men. And I respect them. Please put down your hands. God bless you. Guys, lift your hands. Lift two of your hands. <laughs> Please do it. Lift two. Of, aside, no, if you are not my... Sir, no. Ah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. I'm a caring brother. Say it. I'm a caring brother. I'm a loving brother. What, what else? I'm a what? I'm a... I'm a responsible brother. I'm a visionary brother. Say it again. I care for my wife. I protect her. I take her seriously. I pay the price to be committed. In Jesus' name, put down your hands. Yeah. That's very, very good. If you do that, you will find out that 
you can enter a relationship and i won't promise you a smooth sail but you see at every juncture things can be managed is someone learning something tonight we are going to pray we have three prayer points tonight before we stand up listen the first prayer point is you are going to pray for humility there are some of you that this teaching tonight stung you in a way that you are still angry with me now because it changed your ideologies there are ladies that believe you are too hot too attractive to respect any man let me tell you now straight to the point somebody is better than you period there are some guys that think you are too much of a celebrity you are a hot cake everybody talks about you you are the guy let me announce to you now stop dreaming stop what dreaming because there are three thousand other prophets who have not bowed to bell and god can replace any arrogant man and any arrogant lady praise the lord some of you the way you are behaving you are telling god you don't want to marry because you are not ready to listen to the rules and comply we are going to pray next week i'm going to we are going to be discussing don't miss next week meeting it's going to be a serious it's going to be war against delay and all of these satanic things i'm going to be teaching you a lot of spiritual mysteries you'll be seeing the reason behind delay and all of these things because there are some of you who are standing in for your family members and your loved ones some of you have done all these things that we're saying but things are not working we'll be examining it tomorrow are you ready to pray stand up on your feet bless you now look up how many people did i bring out here where are they four of you huh we are going to give you lunch tomorrow i didn't say you are in a relationship is is our appreciation four of you huh four of you you will go for lunch tomorrow hallelujah next time when we're giving example run and come out hallelujah prayer point number one listen you're going to pray and say lord whatever needs to be changed in me please humble yourself whether you are married whether you are single whether you're in a relationship or not humble yourself and cry to god and say lord there are some things in me there are some mindsets and ideologies that i've been having but from this night's teaching, I've seen that I need to change. Lift your voice and cry. Cry to God. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Say, Lord, I repent from pride and arrogance. I repent from having a wrong attitude a wrong attitude about relationship a wrong attitude about marriage make sure you are praying but Lord I hear your voice tonight thank you for preparing me pray say lord change me walk on me make me a woman of virtue as i am right now i'm not yet fit to be a woman of virtue i humble myself change me don't be arrogant tonight don't be arrogant tonight humble yourself and pray say lord i've tried but you need to work on me. Hallelujah. 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 Now, please pair yourselves into two. You are going to pray for the brother or the sister you are holding. If you can, if you cannot, no problem. Hallelujah. Listen, second prayer point. You are going to pray. Hallelujah. And you're going to say every mindset 
that is in that brother or that there are some of us there are strongholds some of us are stubborn even after this teaching you will live angry and you will live offended rather than allowing the teaching to get inside you hallelujah you are going to pray for your neighbor and say lord please break this person we want excellent wives we want visionary men pray for the person lord walk on my sister walk on my brother in the name of the lord jesus break every pride break every wrong mindset let our sisters become women of virtue women of virtue women of virtue excellent women award-winning women pray for the brothers let our men become responsible men of integrity men of stature men of grace pray for her say lord let the spirit of respect let the spirit of honor come upon my sister grace to respect men grace to respect your husband grace to respect your husband hallelujah hallelujah please you can leave the person the final prayer point this night listen listen we are going to pray for purity in our relationships did you hear that if you've been involved in anything that you know you have crossed boundaries don't feel bad we don't condemn you this is a family are you hearing me this is a family there is always a new beginning are you hearing what i'm saying but you're going to make a decision make a decision with god and say i'm going to keep my relationship pure if you are married say i'm going to keep my marriage pure no unfaithfulness no infidelity lift your voice and pray grace for purity please take it serious pray you've been involved in any kind of ungodly lifestyle or practice please pray say lord i receive grace grace ladies pray and say no man who is not your husband will see your nakedness make a commitment with god make a commitment it is worth it it is worth it it may look unusual but i tell you it is worth it it will bring the anointing of god to your life it will bring the glory of god to your life it will bring the fire of god to your life purity who shall ascend to the hill of the lord and who shall stand in his holy place lord let us have pure relationships holy relationships pure relationships relationships that we'll be proud of hallelujah hallelujah we taught on emotional don't just let your emotions listen there are many relationships right now and many marriages and homes that are at the verge of breaking they think it's satan because that tingly thing is not there i bring you a word right now you know that every home is built by commitment are you listening to me emotions are good but it's not enough to keep and sustain a home if you commit yourself when you feel emotionally high and then retract it when it's down you are not going to have a stable marriage your spouse will annoy you there are times you will be offended but you must make up your mind that you are committed it's better to leave the relationship for marriage we don't believe in divorce we're going to talk about that next week divorce different things let me tell you something listen look at me i'm saying it honestly listen 
If you are in this place and you are in a relationship, if you know you are not going to be committed, please let the brother or let the sister go in peace. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Did you hear what I said? Sisters, there is no putting leg, one leg here. And you are raising the brother's hopes. Making him feel that he is all in all for you. Meanwhile, the real person you are looking at is in rivers. You are just saying whoever among them starts talking about marriage. This is ungodly. Let me tell you. I've said it for years. We don't believe in double dating. Double dating is not Christian. If you feel you have a problem with your relationship, there are ministers around Hallelujah. We have elderly people around that can counsel. By the time we talk with you and we see that, oh, there is a compromise. Truly, we see that based on the compromise, this relationship may not work. Listen, as Christians, if there is need to end relationships, we end relationships, not break them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You break relationships and break people's hearts. Next week, we are going to discuss there are people who have started relationships and eventually they saw that, okay, there is a need. This thing may not work well. We're going to talk about, there are a number of things we're going to talk about next week. Remember I said we'll talk on health issues, family issues, you know, faith issues, and all of these family encumbrances and so on. We'll talk about them. Hallelujah. No matter what it is. Just like you enter the relationship. And you came and met Bishop Stan or Pastor Jake. You say, oh, I'm in a relationship. Bless this relationship and pray. Some of you are in a relationship like secret society. Nobody knows. We don't know. No, you think, let me tell you, we are not sadists. Are you listening to me? We are not sadists. Wicked people who are just waiting. And say, who told you to go out with that lady? No. We rejoice when you are in a relationship. When you are involved, you are in a relationship when the relationship starts undergoing turbulence nobody knows you don't involve the ministers you don't involve people so that will link you with parents and people who can help you counsel now you are facing a situation maybe a health challenge maybe interfaith thing you know all these kinds of we'll talk about them next week maybe there are issues that will honestly not make the relationship work at that point what do you do there are ways to go about it are you following me now so that it is properly managed in to an extent that even when both of you are not together you can be friends there are people who because they did not marry one another all of them have married for 10 years but they cannot look eyeball to eyeball because of what happened this is what we want to avoid hallelujah there's nothing wrong with liking the sister you have heads of department there are ministers in charge let me tell you we are always here to help you i tell you sincerely don't just do things is when everything backfires you come and say bishop this koinonia sisters i don't understand though everybody i'm asking is saying no there is a reason they are not stupid there is a reason why they are telling you no hallelujah praise the lord don't miss next week god will help us you're not born again in this place please listen keep standing you've not made up your mind to give your heart to the lord there is a lot that you cannot do. For instance, you cannot truly walk in purity and godliness. You will find yourself struggling with a lot of things. Hallelujah. You will find out that anything you put your hands to do may not prosper. And now I want to give you an opportunity. There are many of you who really need the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you have given your heart to the Lord. But right now, while I was speaking about relationship the holy spirit was talking to you that the real issue is your salvation please inside and outside inside and outside i'd like you to come out here right now please make sure you don't sit back appreciate them i believe there is somebody at least god is speaking to hallelujah please don't remain in the crowd god is speaking to you you know that you need jesus salvation is a very serious thing inside and outside this is the greatest miracle hallelujah make sure you don't sit back we'll give you a minute again god is speaking to you you need to make it up with god tonight it doesn't matter what issue i want you to come out they are coming appreciate them i want you to come out don't be afraid don't be ashamed 
don't think about your friends god bless you my brother god bless you my brother god bless you my sister i see you coming don't be ashamed don't be ashamed it's the beginning of a new day it's the beginning of a new day don't be ashamed at all god brought you here to begin a new journey in your life hallelujah hallelujah thank you so much for your courage to come out say this after me please come come forward sister say after me lord jesus i love you come you can join them quickly my brother say lord jesus i love you i'm a sinner i ask you to forgive me my sins and cleanse me with your precious blood i repent of my old ways from today i begin afresh with you i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that i'm a child of god the spirit of god is in me in the name of jesus christ let me pray for you father in the name of jesus i thank you for bringing these ones to the throne of mercy i pray that these decisions that they have made will begin a new powerful journey in their lives in jesus name holy spirit i pray that you help them to stand and to serve you in sincerity and in truth in jesus name i pray amen thank you so much please follow the ushers tomorrow you will meet with pastor jakes they'll give you all the details thank you so much hallelujah praise god now you're worshiping with us for the first time this is your first time worshiping with us please run out here quickly we have a prayer and a blessing for you thank you for coming inside and outside please please come we have a blessing very quickly very quickly very quickly let's save time we're out of time this is your first time please come out quickly just come and stand here you will never be the same thank you thank you for coming thank you we have people who came from mina god bless you thank you thank you keep coming we have a blessing for you hallelujah thank you so much for coming this is koinonia were you blessed tonight hallelujah were you blessed tonight i pray that you will never be the same in jesus name. hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain